Welcome to the David Bradley Show with your host, David Bradley. Howdy, everybody. How are y'all doing today? So, as y'all can see, I am still living, breathing. I have survived the craziness of the CMA Fest. <laughs> but I'm telling y'all, I could not have done what I did if it wasn't for the great people at Nashbox Studios. They pitched in, helped out. We're still at Nashbox Studios for a while. Um, and you can come in, you can write a song here, you can record your song ideas, you can, uh, you need help writing a song. They have songwriters that they can help you with. Um, it's a great little thing to come down to. And if nothing else, just come down, hang out, and say hi to the people here. Uh, they've got some really good engineers here, and it's an awesome little place. And they, man, they really helped out. And my assistant, Julie, helped out. Uh, we want to give a big shout-out to Purity Dairies. Um, they help us out with the beverages and everything for our guests. And uh, it's just been... It's been crazy. But anyway, the podcast stuff is still, I'm letting everything go through. And one show a day, I'm dropping on the podcast side. Now, the YouTube videos, they're already all up. And everybody's welcome to check them out. Please like, share, subscribe. I need some subscribers because uh, it helps me. And we get better content, get better uh Maybe some upgrades, some equipment, maybe. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> it's one of those things, man. All right, y'all. We're going to sit down, and we're going to have a relaxing conversation with Mr. Dustin Spears. What's going on, brother? What's up, man? Not much. I'm tired. Yeah, I stay tired. You got to be tired. Because mm -hmm. you just did the, what was the name of that thing down there with the lax? Lack Fest. Lax Fest. 2023. I think it was like the tenth anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Man, so. that's a. I, it's wild. How, how many days was it? Two, three days. Two days. Two days. They get there on. Uh, I think it was Thursday. They could come in at a certain time. Mm -hmm. Set camp up, everybody, and then Friday at seven, I took stage. I was the first uh, act out of the four the first night, and then it was uh, was it four the next night? It's basically me, uh, Chris Taylor. Craig Campbell, mm -hmm. struggle Jennings the first night, and then it was uh, Kentucky Music Mafia, uh, Trap House Coda, my buddy Jesse Keith Whitley, mm -hmm. and my buddy's Lax. It was, All right, it was wild. Second night was more the people were there already. So. Yeah, I remember when the Lax first come out, man. I really awesome got into dudes, that. Man. Awesome dudes. They were awesome. I loved them. Yeah, they're the only uh, <laughs> the only big artist to ever give me a shot. So, I mean, not many people you you know. Uh, <laughs> Just help somebody like me. Yeah, I didn't have a really big following. So. Well, that you know, and, and that's what <laughs> I probably blew you away because I was sitting there watching your live thing, and I'm sitting shooting messages to you. Yeah, and I'm yeah. just like, oh man, <laughs> yeah. I remember that now. Yeah, I was talking about my new song or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that wonderful new song. Dude, awesome. <laughs> that is an awesome freaking song, it's man. A Sunday morning service, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of it. I'm not proud of it. I know people think I'm like, well, he got away with it, but I didn't want to put it out. I did, actually didn't want to. I've got so many serious songs, but I know. But sometimes, yeah. sometimes, man, you just gotta. I mean, I think I didn't want to put it out, but I mean, I'm just, you know, a very different artist. Most artists <laughs> are really serious, and they try to wear their outfits and hang out in the shadows. And I'm just like, I'm the only artist out here. I actually like. On tour, I work my own merchandise booth, mm -hmm. set up, do a pre-show, <laughs> bring people in, sit them down for the lax to come meet. <laughs> like I'm like I'm the greeter, the preacher. Like it's weird. So, but they do that, you know. And as a new artist, I'm really hands on with everything. So oh, I'm you got to be. All, you know, you got to be. So I can teach my my followers one day how to do the job. Hey, you, you know? never know. So, yeah. One day you might be making that big bank. You and never know, man. Probably not, but I don't know. I mean. <laughs> I have a good time, so I ain't really worried about money, really. You know, and that's what I keep. That's one of my things with this show. Mm -hmm. I just enjoy doing yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd like to have you know enough money to where I could do this just full time. You know, just be comfortable. You know, yeah. and 
but I'm not looking to make a million dollars. I'm not looking to do all this stuff and have 15, 20 different sponsors and every one of them telling me what I can and cannot do. I mean, the more money, the more problems I've learned. Yes, exactly. I have to be comfortable. Comfortable is the word you use. I like comfortable. Yeah. Comfortable's nice. You know, I don't want to have to chart, but I want to make enough that I can just at least play. I tell everybody my goal is to get Friday and Saturday every week. But yeah. That's it. That's it. That's a terrible goal, ain't it? <laughs> just to have my comfortable schedule. So, no, I mean, that's it's, it. I think it's uh, it's something to shoot for, Yeah, to is. be honest with it's you. Hard, it's harder than you think because you only got two weekends. It's only four weekends a month usually. Yeah. It's really hard. <laughs> it, it ain't, you wouldn't think it'd be that hard, but it really is. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's when I first started, it was hard for me to get guests. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, I, I noticed this is a big thing. My buddy's uh, my buddy's named Southwind. Mm-hmm. He just interviewed Ryan Upchurch, mm-hmm. and I said, "Dude, you've hit a jackpot because everybody wants to be a star. Everybody wants you to interview them. So kinda, yeah. it shouldn't. It, right now, it's, this is really big podcast. I remember yeah. that, what maybe ten years ago when it first started coming out, Joe Rogan." Mm-hmm. And some guy told me that this is going to be the future. This is what everybody's going to want to do. Well, you know, do it now. a lot of people, so. and, and I kind of do it too, because, you know, Howard Stern was in radio oh, yes. for I years. Yeah. And then he got away from all that, and he started doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. And what he was doing was basically first era, era type podcasting. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's, uh, I think that's what really got everything kicked off. Oh, yeah. Howard was, uh, yeah, he was... And then Rogan jumped in, and yeah. he's been nailing the hell out of it. Oh, yeah. I wish I had his views, but, <laughs> you know, ain't going to have them. <laughs> I wish I had his muscles, man. He's pretty muscled, too. He's a big old stocky Everybody, dude. Every, everybody's lifting weights. I don't understand it. Everybody I see, these even women lift them. You notice that? They got a lot of women. I've been seeing uh, they're getting ripped. the Facebook pictures they're where they're standing there holding their shirt yeah, up, like, showing their. Making me look all crappy, man. I'm like, got jelly rolls and stuff. Like, dude, I'm cool it don't matter. It. Like I, I don't know if I want to date a girl that's muscled. I don't think it's attractive, my book. Honestly, I, it, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this. Nah. <laughs> they get ripped, mm-hmm. and then they get flat. The impa- implants and 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 yes. all this other stuff going on. I and like healthy women. I like them to be a little bit. You, I, I'm weird. I don't want a super hot woman because everybody want them. I want that normal come home to woman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So everybody wants. Yeah. Yeah. It's normal. Yeah. I just talked to my buddy about that today. I don't. Uh, I don't want a woman that's. Uh, you don't want a. Perfect uh, there's no softness to them. You know, Soft. to me, women should be. Lean in. You lean into it. Yeah. You know. I mean. I feel like if I got that girl mad or didn't do something right she could beat me up if she was lifting weights that's, <laughs> where, I, that's where i'm trying to get with it that's just i'm not trying to get beat up in the parking lot of a chili so i'm just being honest oh no me. no like i'm weak oh yeah i'm not i used to be kind of muscle i'm not muscled anymore like i used to be i'm, I'm old i'm soft and squishy and old i'm old <laughs> you ain't that damn old yeah, so, <laughs> i feel it my back's old but uh, well, that's because you've been driving trucks. <laughs> just, just saying, I did nine years that man delivering air conditioners. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, and that that that'll do it to you. Oh yeah, oh god, yeah, yeah. Because I think that was one thing. I mean, you were talking about yeah. it. You know, driving trucks. I did trucks. music full time. Which yeah, I'm, some days I wish I was back in the truck. I look at my look at my bank statement. Go in. <laughs> Piss some nice. I'm like, well, that truck wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I could buy more merchandise. I'm like, oh man, if I was in that truck, I could get plenty of merchandise this week. Oh yeah, I'm overtime paycheck. But you know, it's for, you know, you gotta I do what you gotta I do. I miss it, but I don't. I miss it some days. I like that uh, sweating and you know getting off work and you know having accomplishment. A cold beer. Yeah, if you feel like you really, just, you feel like you're losing weight when you're lifting mm-hmm. air conditioners. So, but now I still kind of get my workout in, kind of. Well, when I go I- to the gym now. I actually go to a gym. So and and what have a fruit smoothie or yeah, I usually have a big steak afterwards. <laughs> I think I just me and my buddy got to I got to really hitting it hard just for the hot tub. Yeah, just for pulling the hot tub, man. I'd pound through my running, I'd pound through my lifting, and then I'd go shoot a little hoops. But I knew on the end of the day, the hot tub and the pool was gonna be there. That's really what I was there for. Yeah, was hanging out in the pool. <laughs> so I lost a little weight there, but two months, three months. But well, I I took I was driving. Sunday through Friday. Yeah. I'd leave Sunday, come back on Friday. Mm-hmm. But 
dude, I got up to like 285, 290. Yeah. I mean, I had a gut going on, yeah. you know, and. Uh, Where you sit and bounce. It, I, I just you. sit, you know. I don't, I don't bounce because I always put the air all the way on oh, the floor. Oh, really? I kept mine up. My feet be dangling. No, nah, I, mean, no. I didn't like that feeling dangling. You, know, like you yes, feel like man. Lily Tomlin in a big rocking chair on you laughing them, or something. Yeah, you hit them one bumps, it could be a bump as big as that piece of paper, and you feel like you throw you out there. Oh, yeah. That's what I didn't like about it. I've seen guys hit their head on the damn cab. <laughs> the stories that you see, is, yeah, I, I've been one of those guys. Right, yeah. yeah it's, it's a different world out there driving. It gets crazy. I'd go do it tomorrow if, like, the music one day, like, if it just eventually doesn't start doing anything, I'll go back more drive. I have no problem. Well, no, <laughs> I mean, you know, once your stuff yeah. starts picking up steam a little bit and everything, uh, you can just have your own little, like, Winnebago, mm -hmm. and then you can have all your merch inside and, you know, all in one, baby. Yeah, it'd be fun. You wouldn't have to worry <laughs> about it. <laughs> yeah, I told somebody, I get bored on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday sometimes. I don't know what to do. I get up early still. Like I'm still on that going to day shift job. I'm mm -hmm. really on it. Like, what am I going to do all day, you know? <laughs> so. Well, I mean. It's weird. Write a song, damn it. I was doing it too much, but now I've got too caught up to where now I'm trying to, like, put them all out now. So yeah. You can write them quicker than you can put them out. Oh, I, yeah. I can. Wait. I mean, I forget. Just, uh, they say, buddy, a guy that's on the same label as me, Creed Fisher, mm -hmm. telling me, man, he was a. Uh, I was writing a song. Like, I'm thinking about pitching this to Creed Fisher. I said, man, he's already got four albums waiting for me. <laughs> that dude writes like a bunch of songs. Oh, yeah. And um, I was just, I mean, I did that, and I'm thinking, I got bored of that, too. I should come out with a book or something. <laughs> Maybe. You could. So switch it up. But You could do, uh, ooh, I got one for you. Whenever you go out and you do shows, mm -hmm. take pictures of the crowd. Oh, yeah. And then you could put together a big videography. I'd get in trouble for some of the crowds I play in front of. They're, well, I mean. The front row is what's. Uh, <laughs> Saturday, I seen stuff I didn't want. It ain't never something you want to see. So no, like, no, no. I can't wait to see that again. So yeah. You hope I never see that again. Yeah, sometimes it's like, pick them up first, please. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I saw it too much Saturday. No, it was Friday night show. I mean, I'm seeing like 3,000 people a night. So you see, oh, man. It's always fights between women and dudes, like women beating up dudes. And it goes back to where we're talking about the ripped up chicks. Yeah. Like the first time, I'll never, I'll never forget. Um, I think it was uh, Winchester, Virginia. I was coming down the left side of the stage. They just called my name out. Mm -hmm. This is a, a big arena looking kind of dance hall where it's like above I me. Mean, there's people and there's people. I mean, you just can't. ton of people in the yeah. front row. I seen the thong that was coming out about this much on a woman. She was laid down whipping this dude, just whipping this dude. I don't Damn. know what he did, but they were just right there. She was just whipping him. And I was like, y'all are taking away my time. Like, I got 30 minutes. <laughs> like, now I got, like, I'm afraid if I say something, she's going to turn around and start whipping me, and I'm not trying to get whipped. <laughs> you know, not, she was tough. And I don't know what kind of thong she had. I'm mean, like a rope, gym rope you climb in gym class. It was, like, really thick. That gum. It, like it may have been a pair of shorts that got twisted during the fight. Sure, it wasn't kind of like some kind of a, uh, what do they call them, big uh, sumo wrestler yep, type something. thing? This chick was tough. I remember. I, I got nervous, I ain't going to lie. I seen this girl one time, and I thought she was real pretty. <laughs> yeah. And I went to ask her out. And we exchanged numbers, and we talked for a little bit. And then I think about second or third day, we were on the phone, and she was telling me, you know, second degree black belt and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's one time a month that that's going to come out. When you do oh, that. yeah. It, it, it's an ass whooping one, once a month. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. So you got to avoid certain things. <laughs> yeah. I've had to learn how to do that. Yeah, yeah I, get my, uh, I get my mistakes from my dad. My dad made, I, I learned, I, sometimes I'll be in a situation like, man, I've seen, I think my, I remember when I was a kid. Seeing my dad walk out of the garage frustrated. And he said, you understand one day, son. And now I'm like getting every bed up. And oh, like, yeah. Right. So, yeah. The dad wisdom. Shh. It'll kick your butt, yeah. dude. Yeah, he's... <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious. Yeah. I don't actually want to talk about this. Yeah. Because the benefit concert yeah. you got going on for the Westmoreland mm -hmm. Middle School Benefit to help kids repair instruments mm -hmm. and to keep the music department. Absolutely. Are they threatening to get rid of the music department? There was just a rumor. I got a message a few, about a month ago, maybe a month ago, 
from one of the band booster ladies. Mm -hmm. So I went to, I graduated there and I played in the marching band up to eleventh grade. Right. Senior year, I went to choir, so I was a singer. Wasn't no good, but I sang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, I ain't gonna lie, I was in there for the women. There's a bunch of girls in there. Well, like, yeah, the that's the whole reason. You know, it still didn't work. So I had a face like this, so, but. Yeah, I, I graduated, um, and when I found out, one of the band boosters reached out and said, y'all, I think they're going to do away with it. They talk about doing away with the band. Yeah. And I come to find out, I talked to someone else in charge, um, and they said that was speaking of, it was spoke of a while back, but it was confirmed that they're still going to keep it. But there's concerns of there's there's not a lot of money going anymore. Right. And there's not, a, there's some kind of, a, from what they had told me was there was a, there's some kind of freezing pipes and it end up water busting and getting on some of the instruments and ruining them. Mm -hmm. And so they already had trouble getting stuff they needed to get repaired. Right. So now there's, they said that there was no insurance would not take care of it. Is what the, the head of the schools were telling them. So I'm like, Hmm. Interesting. My, but I, I know that part's none of my business, but what is my business is I can play music. Mm -hmm. I know by George, we can have people pay $5 give every bit of that to the school and then they can see that people at least care that's the big thing is these kids yeah. know somebody i'm like the fat superman i'm trying to like save them well there you, know you go and i call myself the fat superman i don't know why I'm not really that fat but i'm fat enough to be superman fat <laughs> so i'm the fat chubby i'm the chubby <laughs> superman you know because i can be their superman that's what i'm gonna be somebody can say at least give them that one bit of hope that man people really want to keep playing it's really yeah. important for these people. Because, I mean, the only thing it takes is is yeah. somebody actually to f show they freaking care, yeah. man. And, uh, and my thing is, like, there's a lot more people than me in band. Mm -hmm. Like, they sent the message. I know everybody else got the message. So I'm thinking, well, I know that with my platform, I've been, I've been, you know, I, uh, 12 years at it. Seven yeah. Something, I only got, I had a uh, incident where I lost one of my Facebook pages. Yeah. I already had 7,000 about seven years ago. So I probably have double that now. But I've got enough enough people that like what I'm doing that I know can get on board. You know, at least show up. So yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking. It's not a lot. But so, so far, I've got together News Channel 4 next week. Awesome. Um, I'll be talking, getting some awareness to them. Mm -hmm. At least put us on the map to let people know, hey, we could probably show up. Or there's now a uh, I gotta GoFundMe for it as well. Yeah. Because a lot of my fans live in, like, they're everywhere but here. Yeah. So, I saw him this weekend. And I'm like, we want to donate, but we can't drive 10, 12 hours to. Yeah, to come and yeah, donate. Yeah, so that basically it's just to give back. And it's, you know, that school gave me uh, my education. Yeah. At least I can do, you know. Especially with I'm the music and the choir. I'm not Garth Brooks but I can try to do something. Yeah, exactly. You know and maybe if I do it, then that can show maybe another school struggling. You know, that can, wow, this guy did this. Man, this is a great idea. Yeah. Same as, do you see what Jelly Roll did? Mm -mm. Back to the. I think it was the uh, a youth a youth correctional teaching center. I guess it's the youth. Yeah. He did a concert at Bridgestone, raised so many thousands of dollars, and gave it back to put studios in that correction facility. Mm -hmm. That's inspiring, man. Like I oh, love yeah. that dude's music. I've always liked him back when you know he's old school rapping. Yeah. I seen Jelly Roll when he climbed in the wrestling ring at mm -hmm. the National Fairgrounds. You know what I'm saying? I knew him back then, and. Um, to see what he's doing now to actually get back, even though he's got really big. Yeah. He's one of the biggest artists. And to get back, man, that's just like. Well, that's what I love about. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, it, it's great when you actually have people that actually, you know, they care about the people that help them get to where they are. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and they give back and they help out mm -hmm. and they do what they can. Yeah. This is at least, I, it ain't for me. It ain't, I'm not making no money. But I know how many free gigs I've did in my life at bars. Mm -hmm. I can I can spare one gig to help some kids. You know what I'm saying? And not oh, yeah. people can. When we, how many times you play in a garage on a Friday night with your buddies? You know, you just basically just gonna be a. I'm, I'm not even bringing a band. I'm not even making my band right now. Some of my guys are on, um, which I've been on acoustic all year. But yeah, the guys that have been left in my band, they're all on vacation stuff. So I'm just bringing my guitar. It's gonna be just an old school sit on stool and play for the community. That's my favorite thing to do. Oh, yeah. So, I, I used to love it because, uh, <laughs> like the old Andy Griffith shows, yeah. you know, they used to sit on the front porch and play. Yeah. It's that's the least another, I can do. That's another idea for a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> porch picking. Porch, porch picking. picking and I don't know. That could go crazy if we, yeah. 
uh, shirtless <laughs> porch picking contest. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I just you know it's the least I can do. I've got help here recently. You know, people's helped me. You know, like the lax definitely. You know, oh yeah. Really put me on a whole year full of tours. I mean, ain't so many people die be where I'm at, and that's why I guess I'm so um, quick to give back. Yeah, you I got get to. help. You know, I didn't do this myself. Well, uh, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in that. Pay it forward. Yeah. I know a lot of guys. I've got a few people that I've known. They're now really big. You know, they're mainstream. Mm-hmm. And they want, and they they think they did it by themselves. And I've heard them talk. And you, you've had you've had help. You know, you got to oh, understand, yeah. man. You've had help. You can't do it all by yourself. Yeah, no. It's like me. I got Julie helping me with all this stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got to have people. Who, I thought she was gonna choke me when I walked in. She looked like a security guard sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Julie. Julie's okay though. She's funny. Yeah. But Jim, it's just it's gonna be a good time. July 28th, five dollars to get in. I'm trying to get. I got, I got waters donated today. I just picked up, I think ten cases. A big shout out to All Access in Gallatin. They're the bus mm-hmm. leasing. Yeah. Actually, the Lax got their trailer through those guys. So okay, cool. Big shout out. They actually donated. Man, it reached right out. So I went and picked up some water. And so I'm just trying to get. And then the water is going to be free. We're just going to give it out so it's hot. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's going to be hot. So. Yeah, you never know. I mean, enjoy good. I mean, there's not a lot of things kids can do, especially in Westmoreland. It's a small community, man. Yeah, I know. Really small. I've drove the, through there and blinked and, and was yeah. out of it, you know. But they don't have anything. I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. It's just, I mean, it's, it's going to be uh, it's gonna be interesting, and maybe I could do this. And I was even talking to my good friend Drew. I said, man, maybe I could get to where I do this next year. Maybe I could get one of my bigger, a lot of bigger buddies in the industry, way bigger than me. Maybe they could come out and we'll make it, we could make it a festival. Yeah. Every year for the band, you know, just. Uh, yeah, just for the schools. Just, for us, just a. You know, maybe if it goes good this year, you never know. Yeah. Small things can turn to, you know, amazing, amazing things. Only thing it takes is an idea. Absolutely. And faith. A little bit of faith. A little bit of faith and a good I idea. I didn't know, like I told somebody a year ago, I didn't know I was going to be on a bus, travel around the world. So, I didn't know that. If you told me, I said, you're crazy. <laughs> I'm over bouncing <laughs> the truck. You know, because <laughs> you know? it's hard. It ain't about just being good. It ain't about having a good song. It's about having all of it together come together. Yeah. You know. You know You've got to. It's got to have all come together, baby. And a lot of times it's you're in the right place at the right time. Oh, and, rid of it, yeah. You know, and somebody just, mm-hmm. a lot of times it's just because somebody digs your personality. Yeah. Most of that is true because a lot of people uh, I've messaged years ago um, on social media, like, hey, want to work together? They won't ever respond. And then I mm-hmm. meet them. Like, oh, man, I didn't even see that message. You're cool as heck. Let's work together. So yeah. A lot of it's that way. Yeah, um, it's crazy. Yes. I'm still going to coin. I'm going to freaking put that on a T-shirt. I swear I am. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I got all my saying is I'm just being serious. That's what I say every time. I'm like cracking a joke. I tell so, stories about the road sometimes during my, which is why they think I'm, a lot of people confuse me as a comedian because I got like two or three funny songs. Mm-hmm. We about to F is not really funny. It's a tricking song making you think I'm going to say something. Yeah. But during a song sometimes, I mean, people laugh and I have a good personality. Mm-hmm. I easily get mistaken as a comedy funny dude i've had that thought on my face so many times I'm like bro i got good songs i can't help that. i just have a good person funny person i'm sorry <laughs> like i'm not really a comedian trust me I've yeah got, but a lot of times that sells that song it does. you know i mean i got one called she's a bit crazy she's a bit crazy mm-hmm. it sounds like it's got caught she's a b but so yeah my girl it's first line says uh she saw morgan popping up on my phone saying last night was a blast she asked me who it is. I said, an old friend. She about whipped my ass. <laughs> I told her he's a buddy down in Kentucky. She said she needed proof. While after off, she reared back about knocking out my front tooth. My girl is a bit crazy. <laughs> She's a bit out yeah. of my league. You know, it, it just, and I get to, at concerts, man, people are singing this back to me. Oh, yeah. They get it, and they're like, wow. And I know I need to cut it because, I mean, those songs, you know, you know, that's the ones you cut. When they sing back to me, I'm like, that's what I need to cut. How's that feel, though? Oh, God, it's awesome. Yeah. Because they don't do it on Way About Death. It's been out for how long? They hardly ever want to sing that back. It's really weird. Mm-hmm. Um, Titty Tattoos gets a, it's it's a pop-up, too. Yeah. I've had shows where my serious songs just, they look at me like there's something wrong with me. I crank out a titty song. They're like, the best thing ever. But I've had other times yeah. in Florida. In Florida, I had a lady on the front row just stare at me like, like, like the whole time, like, are you really singing this? It was just awkward. Was it like the the eye of death Dude, coming at you? Like, 
stink eye is what I call it. Yeah, but she's a bit crazy for some reason. It don't matter where I'm at, man, because they, they can sing. it, mm-hmm. And it's really relatable. Oh, yeah. How many guys have had girl names on our phone? And Oh, yeah. You know? Well, I mean, you, in this business, you, you might have a female PR. You might have female managers. All kinds of stuff. Booking agents. I've had all of it. I've had, yeah, I've had, yes. I've had female PR um, or A&R ladies. And now I've got switches for me every release. Mm. I, work through, uh, I work through Dirt Rock Empire now. Yeah. So I, uh, I don't really have a manager manager. I had a guy that got me to the legs that used to book shows for me. Mm-hmm. That sat in. We were just buddies. And yeah. Sat in and got me to where I met the guys. Actually got me on Lackfest two years ago. Awesome. And he owns that. Uh, he does the radio, Bully Beats Radio. Check him out sometime. Okay. Big J. If we get mad, I'll tell you his last name. He goes by Big J. Check him out. I'm going to write it down. He got me. See, I didn't get to the Lex. He knew the Lex music and put me to the guy that held Lackfest two years ago. Yeah. Right out of COVID. So we did that, and then it wasn't no longer later. Lax were in Kentucky, mm-hmm. Beaver Dam, and then he got uh, connected with their merch guy, I think it was, who got us backstage. So I got to go hang out with Clay and Brian. Yeah. That's when I pitched the song. Yeah. So I got an idea for you, man. And Clay, Well, Clay's a dude. Ain't nobody better than that dude. He literally sat down and said, email that to me. Mm-hmm. Email it to me. I, we're, I, we're, right, we're work with that one. Yeah. And he's straight up, man, like, listened to it, took the time out, and ain't many people like that. No. Hey, man. He uh, and ever since then, I've been really, you know, uh, I listen to those guys. When they tell me the plan and what to do, I listen because they've been there. So. Yeah, well, I mean, they started out and they were recording in a garage or something like that. I think his mom told me it was a shed behind their house. Yeah, yeah, it's what Miss Beth was telling me. And I think the mm-hmm. was the first album and the second album was totally done in that shed. Yeah. Uh, I go to their their houses and it's a little place called Baxley, Georgia, mm-hmm. from Baxley. It's out the country, man. It's really out the country. Oh yeah. <laughs> so they preach what they sing. They, they preach what they sing. What they live. Well, that's what I like because a lot of their music videos, when they singing about kicking up mud. Oh, that's what they do. Yeah. Dude, they've done it. They've yeah. been out there. You know. You, don't even, you you have to do it. There's no other way to walk if you're not. It's just mud everywhere. Well, very clayish. We drove in. Me and their tour manager <laughs> was riding in. I got a four wheel drive truck. Yeah. We were going like fifty down a dirt road and didn't know. That it got washed away. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's early. I've been driving. I leave, I leave. When I leave Nashville, I leave here, I guess, around 7 at night. And I get to Atlanta by, like, midnight. Then me and him get to where they're at at, like, 3 or 4 in the morning. Yeah. The bus is at 5 o'clock in the morning. So it's usually on days at the first day of the show. I don't sleep. Yeah. The whole dang weekend I don't sleep. So I get back home. It's really weird. But uh, That's because you're keyed I went, up, man. I wasn't man. paying attention, man. And I'm telling man, that ass in that truck. We that it was like, I was like, hold on, pain. I was turning the wheel. And I was like, I become a professional drifter. It didn't even mean to in Baxter, Georgia. Oh so, yeah, yeah. So it's it's always a uh, it's never never a dull moment. Oh dude, I used to love yeah. that. Yeah, they're they're good. I mean, they they're exactly what they preach. So. And that's what I like. Yeah, we've been working on some stuff. I've uh, we got some more surprises coming out. We've film one this weekend <laughs> i've wrote two i've got two with them so yeah. no one knows the second one so but it, that, it'll, it'll surprise them and they got one coming out tomorrow that looked really good too i think they filmed like two they film they work hard they film like two videos up during lag fest yeah i know two videos on their days off so like they work so so i kind of look up to now well yeah i mean it's it, anything you want anything you can accomplish only thing you got to do is stay at it yeah yeah you do just stay steady. I know a lot of guys are just kind of bad. I've, I've seen a lot of my buddies, like, and I'll get hit up all the time. Man, I can't believe you're finally doing this, man. 12 years at it, you just they just keep, you just got to keep on. It sucks. Most days suck. Yeah. The money sucks. Oh, Most yeah. Most days are just terrible. You going, I've been going for, I mean, there's a lot of nights like this. I ain't going to say it, but there's been a few weekends I've woke up and called my girlfriend's like, if I don't sell two t-shirts tomorrow, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it home. Mm-hmm. I've lived it. Everybody thinks it's just luxurious. Some days are good, and it's it's guy that's good weekends and bad weekends. Some, I mean, just good crowds, bad crowds. It's never a dull moment. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes you can walk around with you yeah. know fifty bucks in your pocket, and sometimes you got fifty cents. My merch, man. I'm telling you now. I'm, I mean, my merch is uh, I sell it myself. So I'm at the booth, and a lot of times I lie to people. 
I'm like, yeah, Dustin's coming out next. <laughs> <laughs> so one knows. I roll off his bus, man. The papers look at me like I'm just like, who's this guy? <laughs> no one really knows me, especially now. They'll know me this tour a little bit yeah. more. But it, you know, at the very first of it, man, was in Michigan. I mean, I walked on stage. They looked at me like, "Why well, is he here? Who's this, is this guy lost?" Like, hey, isn't that, isn't that the roadie that was yeah. selling T-shirts, man? <laughs> so, it, 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 and a lot of people go, "You have to sell your own merch." I'm like, "Yeah, it's part of my job." And I, I do the meet and greet. I perform before the show. Yeah. So I do two concerts a night. If we do like, and so it gets, uh, <clears throat> it's from twelve o'clock. We get off. We get off the bus at twelve to load in. Mm-hmm. It's everybody does their own thing. You know, it's twelve o'clock on. They're doing load in. Then they do sound check. <clears throat> and then I'm the last one that does the, my own personal sound check. The middle artist goes right after them. Yeah. Back lines. Right. And we go back and do a sound check with the lax songs I'm singing with them. Yeah. But then it's like this, as soon as you're done, all right, man, you need to get dressed because the meet and greet's here in about an hour. Oh, yeah. You're trying to set your merch up, go get dressed. Then you're trying to find what you're going to eat. So it's like. Oh, yeah, that's always fun. It's just this constant fly around to about doors open. Yeah. Doors open and you're like, all right. People start coming in, and, and that's when you can lie to them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Dustin's manager. I'm selling this merch. <laughs> that's what I've been doing. Is let, if they don't know me, like, that's cool. I'm like, he's really tall and sexy. Oh, yeah. You know, I come out, they're like, he lied to us. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a fun. It's fun. I tell everybody it's fun. Oh, you can have a blast with it, man. I learned um, I don't do a lot. I don't. I ain't going to say I don't drink anymore. I don't try to drink. It's, I'm older. and you know, It hurts. Health, but, yeah. <laughs> But there's a few times they got me. Clay, 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 you know, them boys don't joke either. Every now and then they'll break loose if they're at a certain venue. We don't have a show next night. Yeah. And so I've learned my lesson, though. I can't drink with the Lack Boys. They had me outside crying. I was crying throwing up. Oh, yeah. I ain't never thrown up and cried at the same time unless I got divorced one time. But I cried and threw up. But I got divorced, <sighs> lost the dog yeah. in the Harley, so I was really crying. <laughs> I went through one. It was rough, man. It was a, you know, about took me under. <laughs> I get about, yeah. Yeah. I kept on though, man. I had to fight it. It was pretty. It was a rough time in my life. It was like five years ago. Did you put any of that in the song? I have called some buck on a horse. Um, she's probably gonna watch this right now and have me sued tomorrow. Who knows? Who, knows? Who cares? Yeah, me, me. Call your lawyer. They'll right. take care of it. My lawyers were terrible. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but I do got. I do got a girlfriend now that is. Uh, she's. Uh, she likes the music though. She's cool. She's laid back. She does. She has to sell merchandise sometimes when I'm playing near home. Well, so you gotta, you know, if you're gonna be with somebody like that, yeah. you know, they they've got to at least support you. You know, she likes it. She's interested in it. She's. Um, I don't know how she feels about the sign and the titties. Can I say titties on here? Yeah, you can say whatever you want to. <laughs> yeah, titties is um, what I have to sign, and I don't really like doing it. I feel disrespectful when I'm doing yeah. it, but that's what they want. It's weird. Them, yeah, but I make them do it. Like if she's ever there. I like the last time I was signing titties. I like looked at him like I'm sorry, I'm not having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right on some chick's forehead. Like it's like I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> she's just like, okay, doing good. she's funny. She goes, you're doing good. Charge five bucks. She's like, you're, doing this, but you're doing so good. <laughs> you know, I can't write anyways. That's why I've, I've never written down a lyric. There's I've never written down a lyric in 20 years. I can't write the good. I'm very messy handwriter. Yeah. I wrote a love note to my girl, and she'd probably get in trouble if she saw it. If someone's seen the love note I wrote to my girl, I wrote a note today, actually. She doesn't know it yet, but I wrote her up. I give her a card all the time. Mm-hmm. It's that time, the, you know, and I know she's had a hard day, so I always buy her a card and slide over to her apartment and leave it. Right. Just as a special gesture, because I'm really busy. You know, 15, so, 1,500 she, people just him, went, aww. If you see the writing, it's like a kid. It's like a <laughs> I know she's like, what is he trying to say there? I just cannot write. I don't know what it is. Oh, it doesn't so matter. I always write at my phone, or I memorize my lyrics when I write. It was just the it was just the thought oh, of the card. I do, man. I do it all the time, man. And uh, she had a really bad day. I think she like she works at a, a company. I think she wrecked a car or something. Hit something car in the parking lot. Had a bad day yesterday. Yeah. So I had to pretend I cared for an hour. She was crying <laughs> about it. At first, I'm like, you did what? You? Cr-? She, I thought she said she'd ran. Some kind of four wheel drive over another car. I'm like, I'm jealous. I've always wanted to do that. Oh, yeah. It's Monster Jam. Like, I'm a big fan of that. Just lock it in and go right over the top. And my that, grandma, I'm jealous of her because she got ran over by her car one time and never broke a bone. You're, and I'm, I shouldn't be jealous of my How in the heck does she do that? I don't know. I'm jealous because I've always wanted to be hit by a car. I don't know what it is. Like, it's just super, like, I don't know why I want to be hit by a car, but 
just to roll over one and get off like in the movies, yeah. you know. And here she goes, getting completely ran over one, not even breaking a bone. I was uh, eight years old. Who are you, Grandma? I'm just kidding. I was eight. <laughs> Grandma going to kick your butt <laughs> yeah, now. She Lucky him. And she got the frying Lucky. pan. She don't need the muscles. She did. But I was, uh, I was eight years old. Yeah. Riding my bicycle. Oh, God. And mm. there was two girls. Get distracted. And I was riding by them. Oh, yeah. And one of them, I can't remember if she tried to spit or if she tried to slap her or what she was doing. Oh, they wanted you bad. But I jerked the handlebars real quick and went away from them directly in the middle of the road. And this car, I just heard tires screeching. Oh, no. And it hit me on the bicycle, and I you're rolled so up on the hood. Damn, you're so lucky. I've been wanting that to happen my whole life. I don't know why. I'm weird. And my girlfriend, she's the same way. She's been wanting to get tased. She has this, this <laughs> dude, she's like, I just want somebody what I'm not expecting just to tase my ass. I'm like, what? I'm thinking, we're meant to be because I want to be hit by a car. For some, I don't know why. It's really messed up. But Well, you could tase her. Yeah, and she then, could run over. You know, a couple of weeks later, she could just bump into you, you yeah, know. She's a mess. She's a mess, but. She likes the music though. She actually lets. She's uh, not going with me tomorrow. Uh, she has to work. She does still works too. She has mm-hmm. a day job. So yeah, but yeah, it's a. Um, you definitely got to be used to your partner playing. It's a hard life. There's a lot of. It women. is. It really I look is. like this, and they kind of want to meet me sometimes. So it's if you're a really sexy singer, it's probably really hard. I'm not a sexy singer. And so yeah, I'm. They still kind of want to meet me. It's weird. I wouldn't know what being sexy is. I mean, I gotta tell you, like. I got stretch marks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I try to be sexy, I, I, but I think that's what makes me sexy is because I own it. I own my stretch marks. <laughs> but look, if I pull them this way, it stretches out even farther. You know. I like, know. Look, I can spell a word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna write a song because she likes me. It's all that matters. You know. That's my next song. My girlfriend likes me. It's all that matters. Oh. I, know I'm, I know I'm ugly, but she likes me. <laughs> yeah. I was sitting there thinking on a play of words of uh, she thinks my tractor's sexy. You could flip that over. She thinks my stretch marks are sexy. Yeah. Or we dig each other's stretch marks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Stretch, There's something to play with stretch that. Stretch the truth like stretch marks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't want to lie, but I'm, I'm going to stretch the truth like your stretch marks. Yeah, is that? Yeah. It's all, there's always someone. I, writing songs is interesting. I don't worry about it as much. Uh, I, let them, I let them come to me. A lot of guys can go, we're going to write a song today and go sit in the room. And I don't write with nobody. I've never wrote with nobody. I, Maybe one time, but I just don't I don't do well with it. I've never. I told a couple of other guests. I would love one time to sit in mm-hmm. when they write a song. Yeah. You know, of course, for 5%. But um, I just want to see the process. I've been on them for they're fun. I've wrote with the lax a few. We we we've sat down and worked on a few things. Mm-hmm. We've had some stumbles in the studio recording. Yeah, but some guys in Nashville I've wrote with. Uh, I wrote with one guy from Warner Brothers, and it's interesting, man. A, a lot of times you want to come, they're gonna expect somebody to come to the table with an idea. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a. Last time I wrote with a guy, the guy put some guitar grooves in there, and it's easy once you get going if you got a good writer if you want to have a good topic or. Yeah, but. It's actually easier if you want to. If you want to write a party song, you got to write with the right people. If yeah. you want to write a breakup song, you got to write with the right people. Right. Now, like the same with recording. That's what people don't realize. You're the same guy don't need to record every song. Yeah. If you want to do more of a country traditional, you want to go to this producer here. A more commercial, go to this guy here. So, and no way they say really. Yeah, you don't use the same people. No. Yeah. You and have like to I bounce used, around. Yeah, I've used my believe it or not, titty tattoos was recorded in my studio, and then one of the gentlemen at at uh, Dirt Rock. Mm-hmm. And West Now, he uh, he mixed it for me and played the drums. So they did a good job. But now I've got Mr. Josh Bright, which is Uncle Cracker's producer, been working on this uh, new EP, which is awesome. It's very commercial, mm-hmm. um, very commercial. One of my songs actually was gonna. I was actually in the process of pitching it to Morgan Wallen, but I'm gonna do it myself. No offense to him, if he wants to cut it, that's fine. I mean, but you're still gonna do it though. Yeah. I've, I've I've had a hard time pitching. I was on a, I had signed a deal with the publishing years ago. Mm-hmm. Had some on hold was with Chris Young and Brett Young. They had them right, had them held. 
There's a few passed. Cody Johnson passed on one of my songs. Yeah. Which I was like, who's Cody Johnson four years ago? Then you know he was. Yeah, nobody did. And then um, so I had a lot. I had one on hold and had one that were going to track, and then something happened last minute. So it's really, really grueling. To get to that process, it's horrible. So I'd rather go. I'd rather go the back way, an independent way. Mm-hmm. Go right to the like with the lax. Go right to the guys. Hey guys, you know I want to find guys got. that are easier to get. It's hard to get with these. It's hard to get your Morgan Wallens. They yeah. got just sessions of people that, you know, that work with them. Yeah, lots of writers. Well, I mean, once they get their you know, their little man. circle of writers, man, I mean, then, that's who they stick with. It's hard. And it's really hard to land it. And but I think you know, there's other ways around it. There's guys making a good living that. Probably more money than I mean, I'll be honest with you, than some of the guys that were probably A listers at one point. Yeah. I know personally what they make. Some people I've heard. I don't even want to hear. <laughs> I'm like, they've never been on C M T but they're making more than these guys. Yeah. Just, there's if you got your fans, man, that's why I tell people that's I think that's what gives the guys hope. Like me. You know, I'm not making what people probably think I'm making. I'm not. Yeah. You know, I do good when I'm on tour because I'm selling merch. I'm making, you know, my base pay, my merch, and I'm also not having to, you know, thanks to these guys, I'm not having to drive all these places. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm getting to find them. They're giving me a chance to ride a bus and give me a chance. Yeah, but, but once you start adding in, though, if you if you go out on these shows and stuff, once you add in gas, food, lodging, because sometimes they won't pay for lodging. And, and the thing, and I don't, you got to have numbers, man. Internet numbers is the most important thing. And I think people try to, a lot of guys try to get around, well, man, we're going to try to get $2,000 out of this venue. You gotta look at the logics, man. You ain't got but eight hundred Facebook friends. How they gonna pay you two thousand dollars a night? You gotta mm-hmm. be able to guarantee something. Tickets. Yeah. Things. That's the thing. It's you know a lot of artists are probably battling. Yeah. To get your. Well, that's that's my soapbox I get on. Yeah, I tell you, man, you gotta get them numbers up. My numbers are coming up, but they're still not where they need to be. You know. You're, you're doing better than me. I'm doing good. I uh, <coughs> um takes a song, man, and I, I don't think I have. I'm not going to say I don't think I've wrote that song. I thought we about to if. It was almost a million. It went overnight on TikTok. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, dude, it's going to kill on YouTube. Let's get it out quick. We finally got out. Pissed the people off with it because I didn't do it just acoustic. They didn't like the music. I got hell from people. You're not singing. I got hell because I didn't sing the, uh, we even about to fool. I said it a little. I sung it just a little bit different. Pissed yeah. me off. Hate comments. Oh, I couldn't sleep at night. I was ready. To, I was ready to like stab them all. Well, they I, got me hell for that because I didn't sing it just like I did in that live. But when you're live, it's different. Yeah. I was sitting around. I mean, and I knew that was going to go viral. I was driving trucks and I'm going to write something on that damn TikTok that's going to blow up. Mm-hmm. I said, "What's going to be?" I said, "What's the worst word you can say?" And the F word is it. Yeah. I said, "How can I say the F word and say it but not say it?" I planned it. It was a mischievous, a mischievous plan. I knew I was going to do it. Mm-hmm. Went home, finally got to, I want to write something so sexy and so, you know, go light some candles. You know? Yeah. And I want to do that, but I want to have it so dirty. With, I want to make them, and I'll say it before I play the show. I'm like, this song's going to almost offend everybody in the room. Oh, yeah. But not, they cannot be mad because there's no cussing. And so when I say I actually planned that to go viral and it did on TikTok, it took two weeks after being out. It, took, it didn't do nothing for two weeks, maybe 300 views. Yeah. I was taking a dump one day on a Friday <laughs> over dropping some children's off at the bowl, baby. And I heard that. I'm like, uh-oh. Like, am I sitting on a vibrating remote? What's going on? <laughs> Toilet seat going yeah, off. And, then, and I looked at my phone and people were going at, at. So to go viral, people have to react. Okay. And, it, so I, and I'm a firm believer if you're going to go viral, it's got to be out. Stanley crazy to where they're going to have to tag. Because when they tag somebody and put that at symbol, mm-hmm. it's over. They can't, the algorithm can't control what people's doing. People carry a song. Right. And they carried it. So I was for 100% sure they're going to carry it on YouTube. It didn't happen. That is crazy. 90,000 right now. That's it. Almost a million. And it, it stopped at 900,000 just stopped on TikTok. Just, and everybody's like, man, this should be bigger. I'm like, I agree, but. You know, it, 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 some it, of these it, algorithms, man, I, they, I question them. So, but that, that was my biggest success so far as in viral. I've had a um, song I, I wrote with the Lex, Redneck Tan. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost at a million on YouTube. That's your song, too? Yeah. yeah I'm with those. I, uh, man, I wrote that for Morgan Wallen. No one knows. I wrote that to pitch to Morgan Wallen. Because I think I'm about that pop top. Yeah. That was Morgan Wallen, so I write for him. And then my buddy, Big J, said, man. Hold that. Don't put that out yourself. We need to get that to the Lex. 
So that's our mission was to try to like just at least meet them. Say, hey, I think y'all do well me singing this song. Yeah. And then they wrote the rest of it. I wrote the chorus uh-huh. in the first verse, and that's what I've, you know, the Lex wrote all their raps. Yeah. And they, I mean, they're they're quick too. The oh guys yeah. Guys don't. I think they could, I think Claim could do it just in a day too. Like they've just. Oh, sit down and just start. And and, and that was good. Their, that song was like I talked to Payne. That was one that's their manager. Mm-hmm. Their manager. He's that's my favorite song by me. I, and I said, man, they did a good job on it. I like that song. And but you think you like them? And I think the one we're gonna come out with next, dude. It's Clay. Clay especially did some singing. He did some mm-hmm. singing, kind of rapping. And just it was just it's all got this different feel to it. Yeah. And I'm saying it just I don't know. That's three. Um, and they worked a lot with a guy named Nate Kenyon, who's a huge writer in here. You know Nate Kenyon? Nope. Look him up. That was the guy that used to write. He did a lot of stuff with him. Yeah. Let's go look up Nate Kenyon and Lax, man. He's phenomenal. Like, dude, I did a show with him. Oh, man. Benefit show in Hazelhurst, Georgia. Yeah. And the dude live? Yeah. Surprised he ain't bigger than what he is. Dude's Listen, awesome. I took uh, – Kicking Up Mud was the big one that got me on the Lax. Yeah. It's a good song. I love that song. And, and of course – mom told me, and she's like, as soon as I heard it, I said it was going to be big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It went big. It's and I loved vibe. it. And, and live, you can really – I mean, I'm in the crowd. Usually, I'm selling merch because I only go back – that's weird. I go backstage before we do our song. Yeah. So, I usually find the exits of the building. But I'm, most of the time, I'm in usually the very, very back of the building. Right. Where our merch tables are. So, I can see the crowd. And, dude, it's just – it's got to be a good feeling for those guys to be out. People knowing every word. And, just, and the room shifts during that song. Oh, yeah. It's usually the last song I do a lot of times in the night. Yeah, and I, I memorize that. our set list for, for being so many shows. Them, so it's yeah, it's usually just a really good banger. People go crazy, man. They love it. I gotta go to one of their shows. Oh, dude, it's twice. You listen to the YouTube. You go to their actual show. Actually, I'll just ride oh, with man. you. Yeah, I'll sell merch for you. <laughs> <laughs> the drummer man is a Mike. He is man. He sings too. And I think he plays kind of like myself. He plays a crap ton of instruments. He's mm-hmm. a drummer, but he does a lot of because uh, our live show is powerful. So he's doing all his drum, real drums on yeah. top of the. There's a few tracks, I think, R and B tracks. From his. Yeah. Then they got the real guitar, the real bass. You know, it's it's just twice as powerful as you would even imagine it being. You know, so. That's interesting. Oh yeah, it's a heck of a show. I watched them make Marshall Tucker. No offense to Marshall Tucker, I watched them make Marshall Tucker look like shit, man. Mm. He opened up for him, and I think it was him, Cole Ford, <laughs> with the Lax's line. You should have saw the Lax line. Wrapped around the building to get merch. No, I can't. Nobody believe else's it. merch line was nothing. I was like, whoa. Man. That's weird. I figured Colt Ford would be right in there with it. Baby, I'm telling you, man, the Lax have got that fan base, and, and that's who's they've jumped on board with what I've been doing. That's the only reason well, I would have what I got. I think, you know? <laughs> I think their biggest draw really is they're a band of the people, mm-hmm. you know? Cause they, they party with the people, too. Yeah, they live the and breathe all the shit. show in Memphis before I did any touring. We did a show in Memphis, and Clay's like, gets done, just walks out and says, where are we all drinking at? And I said, Let's walk over here, everybody. And he, they literally walk with everybody. Yeah. He, he's not stuck up, and I think that's what helps those guys. That's yeah. how I've learned to – I have no stuck up bone in my body. I'll talk to that wall over there. I don't care. Yeah. Well, that's like when uh, Way was on, we were talking. Yes, I love Way. And um, – Nice dude. Way was telling me, you know, he's – because I noticed – and it's just me because I look at different people's YouTube stuff and where they're playing and stuff like that. But I noticed that Way could be playing huge freaking venues, man. But he stays more to a smaller venue. And yeah. I told him, I said, correct Sturgill, me if I'm wrong. Sturgill's is a big Sturgis. 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 Yeah. It's called Stur- I said Sturgill's. Sturgill's a Sturgis. He plays yeah. that a lot and does really well. Yeah. The biker community. But uh, he was, I told him, I said, to me, it looks like you're keeping it at a certain capacity. That way you're closer to your fans. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, yeah, because I guarantee damn well to you, I will stand there until the last person leaves. Right, right. And I will sign autographs. I'll take pictures. I'll do whatever it takes. Nice guy, too. I met him for briefly. I opened up for him the first year at Lackfest. Him yeah. and Creed Fisher, both. And, um, yeah, they're, I mean, he's just like me and you. Yeah, I mean, I, down to earth I had a blast. Mm-hmm. You know, it was him and sounds Sam Lowe. Like, sounds just like, I mean, Waylon. I'm telling you, man, he's identical. Well, that voice is so perfectly right on with the. That's what blew me away because. <laughs> you think it was Waylon. Well, he did two songs here. He did one of his yeah. and one of Waylon's. And, um, sounds good. 
it's like effortless. It's like he's just sitting there talking, yeah. you know. Because some people you see, you know, they'll they'll hunker down a little bit to get those vocals going. Especially Burl Haggard. Yeah. 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 All, you know. Now, yeah, they try to be like Tracy. Pack me up. I mean, yeah. He don't, he don't fake that guy. He's got it. No, I mean, he's just, it, it's there, you know. Yeah. It's crazy. And everybody gets mad. Everybody, I get a lot of people hating. They don't like my rest, but people hate it. A lot of people are like, man, you know, you're gonna blow your voice. I'm like, I'm not gonna blow it. And I just have, I don't know why, I just act, I just have this rest that just stays with me. Yeah. And a lot of people don't like it, but then <sighs> people love it. It's weird. But I've learned I can't please them all. It's like women, you're gonna please some, piss some off. <laughs> do, do what feels yeah. right. Yeah, I just do what comes out. I get hell about it a lot of times. People don't. Maybe, they maybe didn't say it. that shit to Bon Jovi when he was I, doing I, all I that damn like crap. I don't like it. And, <laughs> I think people want me to save it toward the end of my songs, but I just sing. I don't even think I'm singing probably correctly. I just sing. I don't think I don't think I'm great. People like my voice. I don't think I'm. I mean, I think I'm okay. I don't think there's anything great about it. I just sing the way I sing. Yeah, I, but I don't sound like nobody else. What I think. To me, right now with the fans and yeah. everything, to be honest with you, I think it's more of a complete package. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah. mean, it's it's personality. It's your songwriting. It's your lyrics, right. it's everything I'm all real. put together. I mean, I'd real. I'll sing that. That's the big thing. And, you know, real. I can't Being my real. Voice. Just come. I, I don't think it's that great. I wish I could sound like that, Ben Skill. I wish I could. I can't. Dude, how does he get that high, oh, man? man? I couldn't do it. But uh, I don't, um, I've not lost my, I don't want to jinx myself. I'm not, I have not lost my voice. They're really worried about me losing my voice. I was like, guys, 30 minutes a night ain't shit. I do four hours twice a week. Yeah. This was a breeze. Yeah, this they're, was... they're really warning me. You need to make sure you got your medicine, your vocal exercise. I'm like, well, I mean, I get it. Because they say people <laughs> blow their vocal the first two nights because you're talking to people. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, this is easy. I mean, it's the easiest kind of performance. I love 30 minutes. Oh, I got yeah. so spoiled. I did a four-hour show the other night. I started getting words. I'm like, shit. I hate doing it. I hate four hours. I hate singing other people's songs. And I do two. I do two covers or a cover. Yeah. I do Jelly Roll Save Me. And I do Shenandoah. Yeah. Uh, at uh, Two Dozen Roses. That's it. And I do the rest of my... Now, sometimes I do a Morgan Wallen song. I do that... Uh, uh, I've been pouring down a whiskey. That yeah. one... Uh, because people freaking sing. And I learned to, to shut the chatter up. Got to get them to sing. Oh, yeah. When you're acoustic cat, me and Murphy Elmore, he's the other guys. He'll be there tomorrow. We, we were talking, man. And he, it's just like you can't shut them up. You're not got a band. Yeah. So I've learned how to shut them up. You got to be stupid. Something different to get their attention and let them sing. Mm-hmm. It sucks because you want to be able, you want them to just listen to you, but it don't happen. They're drinking. <laughs> no, I, I mean you know, and then somebody the the thing that always killed me. You go to shows and stuff, and I've seen artists on stage, and they're doing their song, yeah, but right in front of them, like there's people texting and doing stuff. That don't bother me. What bothers me is when they freaking tell jokes, they're freaking over telling jokes and trying to get me to. I've had one. It's always a drunk woman. It's never a drunk dude. <laughs> one, dr- no, one, one drunk dude. I ain't going to lie. I had the weirdest approach with this one woman. She kept trying to pull her boobs out the whole night, and she kept telling jokes. Like, abrupt. It was in Michigan. She kept, ah, ah, z- I'm like, I was like, are you having fun? Like, what are you, I'm fucking trying to see. And, it's, and, it was, <laughs> and it was this other show I was in. Where is it? North, South Carolina. Was it the same South woman? South Carolina, there was a dude. <laughs> I, ain't gonna, I mean, can you say anything on here? I'm going to tell you what he told me. No, go ahead. He screamed. This dude's bigger than both of us. He's this big, just swelled up dude. He's he's, he's in my left, and the whole, no, not just once, the whole night he screams, pull your dick out, pull your dick out. I'm like, why are you screaming that? I'm like, for what? Like, <laughs> pull your dick out. I'm like, I'm not pulling it out. Like, I don't think anybody here wants to see that, sir. And, I mean, he was no shut up. Well, evidently, he oh, wanted nice. to see it. <laughs> <laughs> he was so bummed. Tad, too, for me. Put your dick out. I was like, why does he want to come out so bad? <laughs> I was just not ready to come out. It's got to be right temperature. Go to the bathroom later and be I looking have, over your shoulder, that, making sure he's two, not in there. That's two, <laughs> that was the two times that I've been dist- I've never been distracted. Nothing distracting. The drunk girl, <laughs> she kept doing some zama zama. Him going, pull your dick out. I'm like, just for some reason, I'm like I can't focus. Like I was just like, man, this really sucks. I don't, you know. Like I'm just like, man, that's. But then I then I had a 
<laughs> I want to tell you the funniest, the funniest story. And I feel bad, man. I feel bad with this story. I was in Ohio, and because you talking about the stuff you see, and well, I was I do a holler and swaller. You know what Nashville guys do? Holler and swaller. Yeah. And uh, well, I said, guys, on the count of three, I want you all to say something you're freaking proud of. It's something that you just appreciate tonight and just take a big swig. And I said, one, two, three, I love midgets. And I took a big drink. Yeah. Everybody's going wild. Get off stage. I'm at my merchandise booth. This gorgeous blonde just comes rushing my way. You know, like one of the, it was almost like a movie. I'm like, oh, she wants a big old DS shirt, you know. Yeah. Oh, hell no. She looked at me. She said, I just want you to know. I just want you to know. They're called little people. <laughs> and if it couldn't get any, if it couldn't go south anymore, man, I swear to God. I'm not making, I didn't know. I didn't know. She looked at me. Not, I wish I was making this up. I've told Clay about it. And uh, she looks at me and she goes, we're here for a good night of country music. Because she's from up north. Uh-huh. Country music. And you just put a damper on that for a message. She goes, my little friend is here right now. Oh God! I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so like, I'm, okay. Well, she's she's chomping at my ass right now. I look on the corner. There's some girls over the corner going like, oh damn. So when she finally leaves, man, they come over and go, hey man, we're gonna buy a shirt. One girl says, screw that woman. It's your show, bro. Screw. I had their guy taking it for me, so I grab my phone. I'm like, I gotta call my because my comfort zone's calling my buddy Drew. Right. Uh, okay, he's Southwind. He's a. Uh, I call him said. Man, you're gonna never guess what happened, bro. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell him. I'm over here like, man, I'm like, man, listen. So this, I kind of messed up. And I'm talking. I, as as I'm talking, I look, and two foot tall with a three foot long beard, holding a beer bigger than this cup, uh-huh. comes staggering up my way. I'm like, oh shit, I gotta let you go. I saw. So I'm like, I don't know. I, mean, I see him coming. I'm like, man. So immediately, I don't know if it was instinct. I sat down in a chair. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, God, I don't want to punch me somewhere. I don't want to be hit. Well, yeah, at least, you so know, I get on. I sat down. I was like, hey, man, I want to say I'm. He cuts me off. He goes, no, 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 no. You don't do that. You just don't do that. You think that's funny, your games? He's like, we don't. Saying the M word as a midget is just like saying the N word. I'm like, buddy, I'm pretty sure there's a big difference. About oh, that. yeah, a big difference. He told me this. He said, you like Brad Williams? I said, Oh, the, the comedian? That's his midget comedian. Yeah. I, said, I freaking love him. He goes, well, we hate him because he says that midget. Dude lectured me. And you know what really got me? I mean, this dude lectured me. And I'm like, man, can I give you? I said, I apologize, bro. I said, I'm from a small town. I just thought that's what they called. I mean, yeah. I've heard yard gnome, gnomes, dwarf. Yeah. It's just a, it's just a person, like tall people. You know, there's eye bound all people. There's all kind of people. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know it was a derogatory. Yeah. I didn't know. You know, but uh, I didn't know too. We you sitting here talking about no, it. I did not know, but he looked at me and goes, "You know how hard it is to go to a bathroom, a bathroom." I'm like, everybody's staring at you. I was like, man, I don't know how hard it is to go to the bathroom. People stare at me. I do not. And he tells me this. He lectures me. I'm like, how about I give you a head? He goes, I don't want your merch. <laughs> <laughs> I, he looks at me. He hits me with something. I'm, I give him props. He goes, I tell you what. He said, you want to make it to the big time. You better quit telling midget jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to you now. So what he said this, and I'm not talking about my whole night being ruined. This is my second night. Of, this is my second night of three in a row, and we're in Ohio at this point. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I feel like just, I feel like, I feel, I feel like a piece of crap. I'm not like that. I, I would never do anything. That, I would not know that he didn't like it and go do it anyways. You know well, I mean? intentionally, nobody really no. wants to hurt somebody's feelings. No, man. no, no, no. So I have to walk around. This is where it gets worse. You know, I've seen Redneck Tan. Mm-hmm. So now this is, I'm the first first act, which is a shitty slot, by the way, because like everybody's not drunk. They're confused. They're just someone getting there. <laughs> you know, but everybody's using this gig was unfortunately packed. So yeah. I got on there. Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes I get an hour window as doors open. So there's plenty of people in there. Yeah. That actually get to see me. Sometimes I get people going, I didn't get to see you before my come to see you. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. So, you know, it just depends. So I have to walk around the venue during half of the lack set to go behind stage. Yeah. I want you to know as I'm walking back there, guess who's on the front row? The midget. Partying drunk, just partying his ass off. Dude. The same dude? The same dude right up front. So now I'm like, great. Now I got to go up here. They're going to announce me. And I got to sing in front of him the song. And not likely. <laughs> I got to sing in front of this man that hates my goods. <laughs> like, so I did. I sung. 
It's awkward. Clay's like, we got a great person coming up next. Oh, I'm Lord. like, I'm not that great to this guy. This guy's going to probably shoot me. So Maybe he forgot. Well, the first, the, <laughs> and, 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 and now I'm going to crack him now. So I get backstage. I'm telling the lags. I'm thinking the word. I'm thinking they're going to find out. The beanie water's going to be, can't come back here. Clay, you've got to fire him. Yeah. He can't be on this tour anymore. He's made fun of a midget. Because I'm thinking the worst. You know, it's my first tour. Yeah. I get backstage and tell Clay, Clay loses. He's like, what? He just like, you did what? <laughs> By this time, Payne is a tour manager. He goes, yeah, man, that little guy come staring at me in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> he was drunk. The midget was drunk. And the, oh. owner, the owner of the big bouncer goes, yeah, man, that guy tried to fight me a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this midget was drunk just going off with everybody. So toward the end of the night, you know, I go back to his friends. He's real tall. He has really tall friends. He's fucked up. So I was like, yeah, I apologize. I'm like, that's all good, man. He's just drunk. That time, he's getting kicked out. They're pushing the midget out the door. I'm like, I feel so much better about him getting pushed out. It wasn't man. me, you know. Like, yeah, it was, just, it was rough. But I apologize to him out there in YouTube land. I felt like a piece of shit the whole time for rest of that tour. Well, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, it's... It, I was calling you. It's like, nowadays you got to have a list of words and, and things that you can't call somebody or... And I'm, I mean, I'm very easy going. Don't bother me if you want to pretend to be this or you want to be this. I don't care. As long as I don't, you don't either. Make me do it. Don't make me do it, but you can do what you want to do. I don't care. Yeah. You want to come to my concert? I don't care if you wear a cape, <laughs> wear a mask. I don't care. Have fun, man. Be nice to people. Can and I wear a Superman be, cape? Yeah, like... I just believe in being nice, and I felt like I defended, and it just tore me up. Yes. That's how good a person I really honestly am. It just yeah, I mean it does. Oh matter. man, just it bled. But it gave us a good thing to talk about and tell other people. Do not say it because it's a sensitive subject. It's called LP community. So shout out to the LP community tonight. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> I feel a lot better now to shout them out. <laughs> you know, I need to grow up. It's a bad joke. Mm. Still bad. It's, it's still too soon, ain't it? <laughs> She's liking it. That was almost like a dad joke, man. <laughs> he did have a long beard and a deep voice, which really threw me off. That so is it was like weird. having a short dad yell at you. Yeah. It was scary. I ain't gonna lie, I got scared. I sat down. He calmed me down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you know. Well, at least he didn't call the manager. No. <laughs> he tried to fight the manager, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it, it, it was, there's a lot of things that's, you know, I can't wait. I cannot wait to the next tour coming up in August. So, I'm sure. I know I know what not to do now. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to be, I think I'm going to probably, I personally think this next tour, I don't, since it's my second full tour, I think I'm going to actually probably do more profiting. Uh, know what, you know, there, there, there's an art to it, man. Yeah, you there know, really it, is. It's, especially when, see, I didn't, most artists don't have to worry about selling their merchandise. No. A lot of these artists are so big, the merchandise sells itself. Well, um, I did that uh, Freedom Jam, mm -hmm. and it was Morgan Miles, Taylor Hughes, a bunch of them, and Taylor Hughes. That's how. Believe it or not, Taylor Hughes. Morgan Miles was at, at the merch her merch stand, yeah, and she was selling merch and signing autographs yeah, and talking cool. to everybody. I actually enjoy it. Now. I've actually it's one of my favorite parts because I get to watch drunk people. I don't drink. I've learned that I don't. Um, now when I'm on tour, I won't drink. I mean, after the show, maybe a few, but during the show, I just don't. You got to watch yourself, man. They're trying, people try to buy me shots all night. They think I'm the fun <laughs> guy singing about titties. Let's buy those guys shots. Oh, yeah. And they're singing, no, man, you can't even put your shit back in your merch cabinet and get to the bus. I'm telling you, I'm telling you from experience. I'm, I'm going to give you the, the, the <laughs> trick because it was on Coyote Ugly. Yeah. They taught you how to do that. You take a beer bottle that's got maybe about that much beer in it. Mm -hmm. You take the shot. You do the shot. Don't swallow it. Right. And then do the beer chaser, you turn it up, mm -hmm. and as you're coming back down, you spit all the liquor That's in what it. They do, yeah. And then you just hope somebody yeah. didn't drink it at the end of the night. Because <laughs> they did, and, and, and my, when people finally meet me, dude, I, I've become uh, really close to some of these people. They, they'll remember me a lot of times, I'll be wearing my shirts to the next shows. Yeah. A lot of my guys out in like Virginia, I had to do really well in Virginia. And you'll learn where you, Ohio is pretty good, except for the that last one we had. But the, Virginia has always been really good, and um, that's all. Awesome. Ohio, Ohio's really good, believe it or not. I got a piss. I got you. All right, we're back. Nice. I had to uh, make sure. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> oh Lord, where was we at? What was we talking about? Oh, Ohio. Yeah, yep. All the good shows in Ohio. Your your fans wearing shirts to the next show. And they everybody. are. They're gonna wear. They they a lot of them wear. It, so. 
Yep. That's what we need. Yep. I was told not to wear your own merch. I hate wearing mine. I don't wear mine. Now, I'm going to wear the titty tattoo shirts because they're funny. Yeah. They're funny. That was a funny. My my aunt, actually. I call her my aunt. She's a cousin, but she's she's like, I've always thought she was my aunt because I was, yeah. you know, really young. She's There's a gap between her age. Mm-hmm. So she probably could be my aunt. No, she probably could be my aunt. But she's like a mother figure, too. She's a good lady. Yeah. And uh, she's designed this for me. Oh, cool. I told her what I had envisioned, but I'm not, I told her I can't draw good. Wait, 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 wait. She designed the TD tattoo shirt. Yeah, I had the idea. I said, Brene, I want a bra. Like, to where you wear this shirt that looks like it's a bra. <laughs> but if they go, like, oh, so you wear a shirt and have a bra, you know? Like, yeah. And she goes, gotcha. And then so, yeah, it's, it's, it's. Okay, now I got to have one of those shirts. <laughs> I've got more women wanting I'm like, I hope they do good. But she's trying to set me up an online store. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, man, when you tell me you order it, People want this stuff now, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm. Uh, I actually use the nesting project over in Smyrna, uh-huh. and uh, they set me up an online store, and we've got a couple more items to put on it, and then I'm going to put it on my website and everything. Nice. But um, it's people click on it, they pick out what they want, mm-hmm. they buy it, do the credit card, blah 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 blah, yeah. all that stuff through the airwaves the signal goes and they get the order they print it box it ship it done that's what i'm trying to get done i ain't got to do none of that and do you get a good do you make anything off of or is it, it probably takes less off of what you're making off right no i not really i mean it's it's good you got to look at the rois on it i mean you know yeah i love merch now i've got more it's expensive merches the people don't understand like Merch is expensive. It's good, but man, it's expensive. When you buy a bulk, oh, it's expensive. Yeah. You know, and, and at the first artist, I noticed I wasn't really profiting at all. I was barely, I was getting in and going back into merch. I wasn't really profiting. Yeah. Um, but now I've, I've actually raised the price a little bit this tour. Uh, my t-shirts, my t-shirts was only 20 bucks. Hat's 15. Yeah. So I wasn't profiting at all. I mean, maybe, maybe a little, not much. So yeah. now I've got my, 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 it hadn't been a drastic change. It's $30 shirt, $20 hat. Yeah. From this point on, because I have, this is my second tour. And I know personally, cost is, it's, it's. It's through the roof. And I don't have nobody. I'm, this is, I'm, I foot it. Yeah. I don't have no company, no sponsors, nothing. I'd love to have a sponsor. And I, I thought about, maybe I need to find somebody can give something, get a, where I can give them a percentage of how much I sell. But I'm thinking, man. Then it just doing, cuts in. Yeah. If I can keep doing like I'm doing. And now that she's. My, believe it or not, my aunt's really working a better deal out than it's it's closer. I can drive to pick it up now. I'm more hands. Yeah. I like to be hands on with it. Yeah, you know, that's I think everything's built on. If you want it done, you do it yourself. If you want it done right. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, so I've been. It's very. It's, if you want to be an artist, and I hate to be this negative. If somebody said, "Man, I'm thinking about being a singer," the first instinct may be like, "Hey, man, go to college." Because <laughs> I know the, I know the struggle. I thought I knew it 12 years ago. <laughs> I tell them go to a trade school. Just do something, yeah, man, because it, it, you really got to know you want to struggle. And I don't think people don't know. I don't think they understand. Well, it's hard work no matter what you do in this industry. I mean, it's, you know, whether it's an artist, singer, songwriter, whatever, podcasting. I mean, it's it's rough. Well, I mean, um, I drive myself too. A lot of times, I'll drive to show with like the bus. Yeah, See, the bus broke down one weekend or two weekends, maybe three weekends. Yeah, and it made sense to me just drive nine hours to the venue, or eight hours. Yeah. Buddy, when you're doing that driving, then you gotta go before him. No sleep. Yeah. There's well, nights. I, mean, I was just having to pull over and sleep in my truck. There's I, I did one show and I ended up I donated my time because it was a good cause, you know. Right. And um but it, it ate in that pocketbook, mm-hmm. you know. You just know, I, the gas money. I'm telling you, gas and I think eight hours of my truck, a good seven half hour trip is one eighty. Almost mm-hmm. two hundred dollars round trip. Yeah. I drive a four-wheel drive Toyota Tacoma mm. you know, for the V6. Yeah. And it's uh, it is. It's, it's, it's a nice because it carries all my stuff in it. Yeah. I love that truck. Oh, yeah. I used uh, to have one. And I could pull a trailer if I bring the band out. I could have three guys ride with me and pull a trailer, which I'm nowhere near that level. That's the thing people ask me. Man, we need you to get you with a band. Like, well, you're going to have to come off the pocketbook. I would love to bring a band, but this 400 bucks tonight. No. You can't bring a band. And it's just, it's stages. You know, I'm still in the stage of still just doing it. Um, I believe in if it takes me, you know, 20 more years, I'm gonna do it the right way in the stages. You yeah. Gotta, 
be able to get comfortable just you making it and you bring your band in you know and it's, it's i think it's you know it's just time that's all it is just very much time you keep it's persistence like i'll tell you one best advice i got right to you a year and a half ago almost two years ago that's by jesse keith whitley we sitting there i said jesse you think i got what it takes he said oh got double what it takes bro he goes just pound away and piss people off put a song out a day yeah Jesse's always been open to helping me out with advice. He's pretty smart with it. Yeah. His mother, you know, and his father, being as big as they were, you know, and are, and you know, he knows a thing or two. So well, I'm, you would I, think. I've been lucky to have some good, you know, friends that have really helped me. You know, I've been very blessed. Yeah, because so, I mean, there's some people that, you yeah. know, and I bring this up. Just you got to have those those good people behind you mm-hmm. and helping you out and getting good advice and everything else. Because for the handful of people that are helping you, mm-hmm. there's also about 30 out there sh- just circling you, oh, waiting to take a bite. I've, I've had that happen. Um, I watched my I, – it's, it's scary. I didn't know – I didn't think I was that, that needed. <laughs> I don't like being needed. Yeah. Or that they can get something off of you. I've, I've had that. Uh, in my past, I've had that a few times. Yeah. Had, uh, stuff I'm not proud to even say about. I, I won't even, I don't even discuss it, like – I'll just say this. I, I'll say this much. Uh, I've had a, uh, I've had booking agents that are not same sex as me, saying, "Hey, uh, I will, <laughs> I will book you this show," and then I get, end up going like, "Well, I got your hotel room, I got your show." I'm like, "All right, I get to the show. I'm making good money, and uh, get to the hotel. And it's just one bed, and I ain't know. I mean, it's late. You no, know yeah, what I'm you hot, but like now I realize, oh man, she's trying to get in a relationship with me." I, mm-hmm. I, I, I'll, I'll spill it all here. I've had that, and I think. And at first, I'm like, it's kind of cool. Get paid, get laid. Next city, please. Yeah. Back in my day early. This is back. This is before I started actually really, you know, taking it very serious. Yeah. You know, I do. I know. I know people may not say I take it serious, but it's my damn job. <laughs> oh yeah. But back in my day, I've learned that there's people thinking, and I was promised big things, you know. But you know, it, it had a everything has a price to pay. Stick with me, would, son, and I'll make you a star. Right, yeah, I've seen that. Uh, I've had that. I've had people don't even know all this. <clears throat> I've had so many, so many incidents for that. And I've, you know, I, I'm right now, I don't have management because I have different uh, people that's in charge of what I'm doing it, that are giving me what they call advice and what they say, putting you under my wing. Because mm-hmm. you just need, you don't really, honestly, you don't even need a manager until you can't do it yourself. Yeah. You know, if you can do it yourself and, all a man, you don't need a manager unless your manager can take you to something. Here you're at. You don't need a manager. If your manager can't take you to here, yeah. your manager's going to take you over here for a little while. Well, you need him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You don't really need anybody until you can leave. Exactly. So he's like, man, so you got enough on your own to where somebody else can get you to the next level. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've, I've noticed in an industry right now, there's, I don't know if they're managers or who it is, but they'll take an artist. And they will keep them in one central location and keep rotating around through the same freaking clubs over and over. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, it don't take a rocket scientist to go, you're not growing your base mm-hmm. if you're still circling the base. Yeah. What I, and what I've learned is I'm my own booking agent now. Yeah. I book, I'm not on tour. I book my own stuff. Mm-hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's booking days. What I've been doing is what you're saying is kind of true. What I do is I started, and I had a guy tell me years ago how to do it, but find, find, I would go four hours out. I don't like going over four hours out. Yeah. Just acoustic. Now, with a tour, I can do it because I'm going to be out there three days in a row. All right. But you want to make, it, it's just hard to make sense of it. It's got to make sense logically. So, what I do is I go to a venue, four hours home. I know what I'm going to make. Uh, you get you try to you know you're gonna make tips try to make your tips yeah it sucks girl and then you come back and you do a few of those and find one two hours then find one 30 minutes from your house no the next month do the same thing and try to add and i notice when i do that and i take a picture of them crowds and i you know i put them pictures on social media then i every now and i'm gonna get somebody go hey man got a club out here i want you to play yeah so that media we got now is you don't need a manager you just need a damn camera and a, and a wheel and a drive do the shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you drove know. truck. You know logistics. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's very simple. Four hours from your house, go out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then two hours to the next town. Yeah. Two hours to the next town. And it's still four hours back to the house. Mm-hmm. 
And a lot of, you make, I can lower my price on the second, third night. I love doing three nights. Yeah. But it's just I don't have that knowledge. That's my next goal. My goal for, you know, 2024 is to get a booking agent that every weekend will keep me to where I'm making it log- logistically make sense. Yeah. That's all I want to do. You know, that, that will be my goal to have someone help me with that. That's really all I need. Yeah. I mean, I, I got the merch. I pay for it. I pay, you know, I pay for the, the recordings. You know, I've, I've been doing most of it, just trying to do it. And if that dang near breaks you, time you do that and get your gas. Oh, yeah. And, it, it, I'll tell you, man, it, it's a, I know what they talk about oh, yeah. at times, but I know at the end of the day, man, once this stuff starts coming out, you know, next year it gets, it all gets a little easier as you do it, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, back when I was doing lights and sound all over the place, I mean, I was buying a little bit of gear here and there, building my whole set. And then I would go to the clubs and we'd agree on a set price and I would take their lights that they had yeah, and I would do my fill lights and create a bigger show. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the night, I kept getting, uh, well, we didn't make that much tonight. Yeah. Uh huh. Sure. You got to get to where you can sell them tickets. Mm-hmm. Like, and I don't play here. I do not play in Nashville. I yeah. used to play on Second Avenue. I just people like, why don't you play? You're, at, you're in Nashville. You're my mom, man. You don't make no money here. Everybody's trying to think, and you come. <sighs> you know, I uh, I've heard fifty fifty on that. I um, I got a buddy of mine, friend of the show, Mark Hat. He plays. That's all he does. Really? Him well, there, and now, an acoustic. There's some circuits, but he, he'll get in trouble if he leaves Nashville. It might be. There's one. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've heard it. Now, I mean, I'm not going to mention any names. There's one circuit down there, buddy. You you get caught playing in Ohio, you're done. That circuit ever again. That's weird. Really weird. That's why I don't mess with it. I've been told. I've got, I say I got big buddies. I know the big yeah. Buddies. So they told me, don't ever, don't ever do that. Stay on 2nd Avenue, baby. Yeah. Stay on 2nd Avenue. And I've been Doc Carl days, but I don't know, man. I've been trying to reach out to those guys because it was cool on the Saturday night. Mm-hmm. So, Bring off six, seven hundred dollars on Saturday night, easy. Yeah, Get drunk girls. Well, I know drunk there's girls want Chris Stapleton. There's uh, <laughs> there's some artists that have actually gotten on the uh, hard rock circuit. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what you're about. And doing that hard rock thing. I tell you where my circuit is, Ohio. Mm-hmm. I'm in Ohio. I'll be there. I'll be there the July 14th. No, July 15th. Yeah. Uh, Indianapolis. Like that whole that whole that. I mean, there's people wanting. If you can sing actually good. Yeah. Go pack a house out. Do a flyer on the internet. You go there. I'm telling you, man. You leave Nashville, you get that numbers because the people people respect you. They they don't get a lot of good. They don't get a lot of good music. Yeah. These small town. They don't like even Westmoreland. You know, where I'm from, they don't get a lot of. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants hey, to play there. I'm, is there a bar in Westmoreland? There's one called Sugar Grove. I played there years ago. Years ago. Yeah. It's a, it's a dive it's a dive bar. Big yeah. Bar, but. When you go to these like places that it's a trick to it, mm-hmm. you might do it. They'll put on a flyer, Nashville recording artists. It's all, yeah, it's all it's all a it's all a game. Mm-hmm. It's all like because you and then I believe it or not, and I'm not saying me. I actually do have somewhat of a name now. But when I first started out, I put Nashville record. Now I put on tour here, stopping in here on tour. You just use everything as a stepping stone. Yeah, I've learned it to get your gigs. So people, if you can, y'all can learn this stuff. I, I'm free advice. It was never given to me. I had to really go out and I had to sleep in a car a few times to learn this. But yeah, you just you, the internet's powerful, man. Oh, you can do all kinds oh, of things. Oh God, you know, I mean, it's it's getting your gigs is, and I've learned a circuit. I I play the same places, but I've got, I had about five or six I was doing so it wasn't every month. Mm-hmm. If every other month I'd be back there. So every yeah. two months I'd be back in Ohio, or I'd be in yeah. North Georgia, Chattanooga, and you can go and still not go broke. But you, yeah. No, I don't. I don't. And then you could play it up, you know, and you know your your favorites coming back, you know, Dustin Spears. I've getting to, and when the guy told me when you can do that and start building crowds. Last time I played North Georgia, Crazy Acres, Plainfield, Georgia, couldn't even park in park a lot. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, that was also a birthday party and a video shoot, but they stayed around. You know, what I mean, they, they still stayed around, and they promoted three events. And it's summertime; outdoor is really good for the stuff like that. Oh yeah, but um, I love outdoor festivals. Yeah, it, it's as long as I'm somewhere upstairs. I hate sweating. I'm not. A, <laughs> I, I can get one bit hot, and I'm, I get to itching. Uh, I break it. I don't know if it's I have to, I get itching my back. I'm done. My fun. I had to go get. All weekend, I stayed in my truck with the air just blasting me. Mm. Hit me right in the damn face because 
I hate burning up. I'm not a sweater. Yeah. I'm allergic to work. That see. <laughs> I ain't sweating. I don't if I get to sweating, call I've called I went I've took two showers today. I'm a weirdo. My girlfriend thinks I'm crazy. I can't she, stand the cold. Had, I've had three showers a day. Three showers. I don't know what it is. I get to itch and then I can't. It's like it's it won't stop. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm allergic to the salt and the sweat. If it's when I'm sweating and get hot, I just I'm it miserable, man. Could be your body wash. Maybe. I hope ain't nothing dangerous. I hope I ain't dying. I suggest switching over <laughs> to Doctor Squatch. <laughs> yeah, man. It's just like I play. I don't like playing here. I play. I love to. It's a vacation too. I get to get out. See a few things I've never seen. Meet somebody that's a potential customer. Mm-hmm. That's the best part about the tour. You can meet more people away, and then you're and it's like you don't have to lie to them. You're really on tour. Yeah, they love the lax. They're gonna love you probably. If they and the thing about this, people that know the lax are bringing somebody with them. They trust the lax. Yeah. So if you're on tour with the lax, I'm telling you, man, you're gonna get good fans because they they they're loyal, man. Oh, they, they got they, some diehards, man. And then they become your fans. Mm-hmm. You know, and you gotta, but you. Never, never, you know, you never want to take that for granted. That's why I always thank yeah. everybody. In this business, you can't thank enough people, man. No, you can't. Not the, and young guys forget about that, you know. Oh, well, you know. I was one of them, too, back in the day. I was about, what, 23, 24. We thought we were really doing some stuff. Did you? Like, didn't do shit. Did you have now that Now that I know air? what I'm doing now, I never was doing shit. Did uh, you have that air back then? That, uh, you know, no, little- I was really muscle and slim back when I was 21. 20, I, I looked better. I wish I had my body back then. <laughs> you know. But I mean, thanks to Luke Combs and my buddy Jelly Row, I mean, I can. I think I'm gonna be all right. Like, yeah, you're good. I think I'm all right. I think chicks dig a fat dude. That's really weird. Dad bod is my what my girlfriend they call thinks it. I'm the most sexy. I'm like, what's wrong with you? I'm not telling her I'm not hot, but she thinks I'm like hung the moon. I'm like, mm-hmm. I think her eyes are rough. I don't think her eyes work. Well, don't get her surgery or anything for them. <laughs> I mean. She's out of my league, buddy. I hate taking her out in public. Dude, dude, that's why I sell so much merch. She's gorgeous, man. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Now, just don't put her in a bikini up there because you'll, then you'll come out fighting. No, I, no, I can't do that. I've had that. We've had some fun, man. We've had some funny stories for her. She don't, she's not used to road life. I've took her on the road a few times. and she's. Uh, we've had some incidents where she didn't know people was trying to get us to go hang out with them after the party mm-hmm. and i had to break to her the next morning hey babe they're trying to get us in their bedroom with them mm. she was like, no she's so nice. <laughs> no i'm like absolutely you I'm glad we didn't die last night listen to me next time that's right yeah i talked to her like, don't don't talk to everybody Mm-mm. she's so sweet man she talked to that wall over too so it was a uh, <laughs> she you know, we yeah. might have to get her a podcast okay. then. <laughs> she, sometimes we'll get. Sometimes she'll get on her. She drinks those uh, twisted teas. Yeah, we'll do karaoke a lot of times. So she'll get on my Facebook Live and go karaoke on the weekends. She's funny. She's not a bad singer. She's trying to do the national anthem at the uh, event, and I was like, I don't know, babe. I think we should practice it a little bit. She goes, No, nah, I'm ready. I'm like, I know you feel ready, but I've heard you sing. You know, and I'm like, you're not going up there drunk. So, I mean, <laughs> you know. Like, not on the national anthem. You don't need to be drunk. She, she's got a decent voice, though. I think she's got a lot of faith in herself, which is what you got to have. I don't have a lot of that. I still have faith in myself. I'm doing big things. It's still like I ain't doing shit. Yeah. I just, I don't know, man. I just, I know what it takes. And, uh, you know, from where I, you know, am to where I am now, I still got a long way away. Yeah, but. You know. I dig your shit, man. I mean, it's good stuff. My new stuff's awesome. I just don't want to get it out. Uh, it's going to be a while, probably. I just put this one out, but and then the I whole EP is so much better. And then I was sitting there watching the Titty Tattoo oh, video, and I was rolling, dude. Well, I used average girls. You know, those girls are sweet, man. They weren't. We And they'll tell you, man, we didn't use these all fake-looking people. We wanted to use everyday girls mm-hmm. in the world, um, you know, that just look like the everyday grocery shopping girls. Yeah. Average day softball mom. Your average day, you know. And I, somebody's like, man, you didn't get no models. I said, I don't know how many models you've seen got, t- but your average girl got your titty tattoo. Yeah, it's your, it's your Springfield's finest, baby. Yeah, you know, I call it the Springfield Desperate Housewife of Springfield. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, or you know, it's just you don't need. I don't want to be fake. Now, exactly. Too many people fake out there. I've seen it. Well, that's you know, <laughs> see, me and you were on the same thing because I'm just yeah. I did, this show. I want it to be as real as it gets. Oh yeah. I don't want fake. I don't want air. I don't want, you know, all this bullshit. I, just people, real people, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm real. I'm lucky. I always tell you I'm lucky. <laughs> I'm very lucky. I wasn't, you know, I think it's luck. 
because I'm average singer, very average. Compared to your top singer, I'm average. I think people just kind of, and you, and you got to understand that people will tell you you're the shit all day long. You don't oh, yeah. them people. Then people are not going to go up and go, man, you really suck tonight. You know, they, it's just part of it. They're in this zone, and when they get to drink and they get in front of you, and they sing your videos, they get this weirdness about them. Yeah, they get really weird. Some of them get weird, and they're going to tell you, man, you killed it tonight. In your heart, I'm thinking, I sound like shit tonight. I hurt myself. Mm-hmm. But you just never let that go with you. You always got to say, I suck. And you smile. And, you know, you got to think, you suck, you get better, you know? Yeah. I think I, a lot of people get too comfortable, man. You can't get comfortable. I'm my worst critic. Yeah, I'll be too. You. you don't have many shows, finished shows <laughs> I've actually watched. <laughs> really? Of my own stuff. Yeah. Two. Oh, wow. And I, yeah, I, hate I going criticize the hell out of it. Man, it's, they say it's good to do it. Um good to do it to know what you messed up on and and i i'm like you though i'm like damn i, I whew, thought you think it's better than what it actually is yeah and you go back and go man i thought i really killed that song <laughs> Many, instead uh, i slaughtered it <laughs> i had a guy i had a dude that this is this, this one dude named alan he's named alan may he's this dude that wears this big pimp suit and he filmed a video cool ass dude he was at actually at lack fest mm-hmm. big shout out man the pimp suit he uh was at florida we were doing a show in florida that's where i met him and he come up to me and he was like a Digging my stuff, man. He I signed his signed his pimp hat or something, and uh, he actually tagged me like a week later in the song "Over," which is one of my favorite. Songs. Yeah, it's gonna be on the CP. Okay. And he was guessing he was close to some jackass. And during the video, when I'm starting to hear this one dude said, "I know this motherfucker," <laughs> sounds like <laughs> shit. <laughs> it made my day. I'm like, I'm making it. He knew me, and I sounded like shit. When yes. the haters kick yes. in, you made oh, it. It's all, I did sound like shit. Probably did sound like shit tonight. My guitar was out tune. I could not get my guitar in Florida. The heat, it yeah, changed the over. humidity. It went straight from. I mean, in Tennessee, it was like forty degrees. Mm-hmm. It's seventy something in Florida, so it was just like I did sound like shit tonight. You were sir, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, because uh, that weather will play havoc oh, on the shit. acoustic. My guitar is. A, I got two thousand dollar Taylor. Yeah, I sold most of my stuff to get because I like it. It usually stays in tune, but that night yeah. just wasn't playing with me that night. Well, you know, have you called Taylor and said maybe y'all could, uh, you know, help me out a little bit here? I haven't. They told me at Sam Ash. Big shout out Sam Ash. That's where I shop. Mm. I think everybody should shop at Sam Ash. They're good people, man. Uh, I actually worked there <laughs> back when I was 21. Yeah. But they told me to definitely tag them, and they'll start. They like when you tag them. Yeah. So I'm playing a pretty high end Taylor, but it's it's just nice. Like, I ain't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, everybody says I pick good. I don't think I'm that good. See, I want a guitar. A picker. I wouldn't mind having a Taylor, to be honest They're with nice. you. They're really tinny, though. But uh, I want to have at least one or two acoustic guitars. Mm-hmm. Martin's what you'd like to get. Hanging on the wall. Put this on a Martin. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, God. And take Ooh. that way. You ain't got to worry about bringing a guitar if you want to do a song or whatever. Yeah. I already got one here. It's awesome. You know, I mean, I don't want, you know, like the, the tour pack that yeah, you get at Walmart. There's some that break down. There's a guitar that literally breaks <laughs> down, locks in place, and it sounds good. Guys, like a backpacker, some kind of. I have never in know, my life heard that. Pack. It strings down, and it breaks down, and it throws in a little backpack. Dude, it's awesome. He locks back out, and it sounds just that guy had it. Wow. Awesome, yeah. Yep. So we got to find out who makes that damn thing. Hey, Martin now. or Taylor one. I think they make really. I'm, I'm pretty sure. It's weird. It's a weird guitar, but yeah, that um, that's strange stuff, man. You want another bottle of water? No, I'm good. I'm just holding this one for looks. Oh, okay. It's comfort zone, know. baby. Okay. Yeah. Just make a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I've never did good. I always do better with a guitar in my lap. When I've did most of a radio interviews, I've always had a guitar. Man, it's weird. Mm-hmm. And in a studio, when I go just do vocals, I, I feel like I'm not as comfortable if I'm not singing it and playing it. It's weird. Yeah. I've had um, I've had a couple of guests on, and they've held the guitar in their lap the whole time, you know, and just also hides my stomach. Yeah, well, I mean that's real good, you know. It is. Look, honey, I'm sexy. I'm sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was sexy. Like hey, on the mornings, I had to really dress up. I got these badass boots, so these three hundred dollar pot python boots. That look like yeah. They're sexy, and I wear all black because it's slimming. Everybody's like, why do you wear like, the jet black in the summer? I said, because number one, I'm here to look as good as I can. Mm-hmm. Number two, I'm fat. I'm being honest with you. Yeah. So I, do. I wear a lot of that black. It's slimming. My mom tells me I'm fat every day. My grandma's like, they want to remind me every day, just like I don't have a damn mirror in the house. Yeah, I know. It's, it's like, you know, before you leave, you're still fat. 
Thanks, parents. <laughs> Love y'all. Every time I go visit my mom, grandma, you're like, you're fat again. I'm like, I know I got fat again. So I do. I fluctuate, man. I could I could just eat grilled chicken and water. Mm-hmm. And all, but then I go to this place called Bonfire in Hendersonville, man. I'm addicted. It's like drugs. Is that any good? Oh, shit. Because that's not far from my house. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I took my girlfriend the other day. She's like, wow, you're not lying. So it's awesome. What do they got? It's like a it's like a Mongolian stir fry. So you go get your meats, you get your vegetables, you put your whatever sauce in there. Yeah. Grill it. And then if, if you get the wrong stuff in there, you'll be in their bathroom like 10 minutes. <laughs> I've got celiac disease, so I have to have gluten-free teriyaki sauce. Yeah. I didn't have it last time I went. Ooh. I was skipping. That was a explosion waiting oh, to happen. God. Door don't lock. Now I'm in there sweating. <laughs> you know, because I, mean, cause like, cause I don't know about you guys, when you got a shit, you just kick the door in. Like, yeah. So I'm like, I don't want to be a vulnerable. Somebody kick the door in. I'm like, hey, I'll share it. You know, like, I have a cheat. <laughs> it's just terrible. Sorry, you try to do all that. No. I, and I, I shit in a lot of weird places because I'm on tour. You have to shit where you can. Mm. And you eat where you can. The bus is, I don't know if you've ever been on a bus, but mm. you sleep in a coffin. Yeah. It's tall. And when you hear the bus break, stop. You know, it's time to go either shit. If you can't shit, make yourself shit. Yeah. And grab you something to eat because you don't know. When you get to venue, it's just business time. Yeah. There ain't a lot of time. So I've had to shit in a lot of weird places. Oh, yeah. So I like pilots. So pilots are my favorite place to shit at. That's where I was at most of the daggum time. Shitting is a, it's We were fueling at the pilot or Flying J. Of course, when we got over in New Mexico, we got to stop at some of the casinos. Oh, wow, yeah. You know. I love that. We'll be out in Vegas. I think we'll be out. I think I got scared. We're going to be out West Coast. In November. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited as hell. Because I only got to be up there on an airplane before. I've never got to actually just go out. I've been to Vegas once. I, one of my friends got married. It was kind of weird. We rode a roller coaster over Paris. It was really weird. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know why we did that. <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> Two grown ass men in tuxedos were on a roller coaster. Like, oh, look, they just got married. Yeah, they did. Leave us alone, asshole. <laughs> it's my boo. <laughs> so, it's just weird. It wasn't romantic, I'll tell you that. But if we were, he was bigger, man. He's lost a bunch of weight now, but we were stuffed to that. So we didn't even do a fucking seatbelt, man. We're just fucking my just titty was stuck in there. Titty, you know? Yeah, it's horrible. So yeah, but it's it's you know I'm excited for that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, hell. Yeah. If you know. if you want to go to Vegas, I can put a blindfold on you, drive you downtown Nashville, and then just tell you it's Vegas. Yeah. It smells the same, and the streets are. I remember the streets were dirty when I was in Vegas last mm-hmm. night. Baseball cards with strippers on the back. Yeah. I ain't got that much money. I don't think anybody's got that much money. I ain't trying to lose money. my girlfriend. I ain't trying to go broke. Because <laughs> two of them's going to happen. I'm going to tell you. So. One to look at. and <laughs> I was collecting them like they were damn solid. I was collecting them like I was playing Uno. But, yeah, that's uh, yeah. You, man. you could probably do that. Invent your own card game. Yep. Bustyhorse.com. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, they, 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 You see a lot of weird stuff out there, though. I've seen a lot of... Uh, Swingers are a big activity going on now. Mm-hmm. People swinging out there. Yeah, Florida. I've had guys actually, Vegas. actually want me to go sit next to their wife and try to pay me to go hang out with their wife. I've had to happen. Mm-hmm. It's uncomfortable. I'm really uncomfortable. I can imagine. Girls too. I'm, I, I don't, I'm really respect. I know I don't see respect with you much. He put out titty tattoos, but I just really, really try to be respectful around women. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I treat them as if they were my girlfriend. You don't ever hear Exactly. I don't go up and make conversation with a lot of them. They'll come to me and then I get awkward. Get really awkward around them, but I've had a lot of times where I've had swingers come up to me and oh, yeah, just swing it with me. I'm like, I don't know if I can. I couldn't do it, man. Even if, if I didn't meet my gorgeous woman, if I didn't have her in my life, I just don't think I could be laying there with some else's wife and look over and some guy be smiling at me. I just, I yeah, that that, that that was be weird. I, I mean, anybody's doing it. And hey, what's he gonna do? Take pictures, video? Yeah, I mean, like I'm afraid he's gonna judge my my pelvic thrust and I'm gonna be upset and think about it too much <laughs> I'm afraid I'm gonna be like I don't know man like, help me out or something like, okay so I got a visual for you yeah okay you <laughs> two girls in a bed and their husbands at the foot of the bed with the scorecards yeah, like, <laughs> I don't think I mean I don't think I'm good at that activity anyway so that's a good move right there you got a 5.8 the lights, the lights can't go off dark enough for me when I'm no. doing an activity in my life I actually didn't get a glimpse going to the bathroom. Oh, God. Oh, I can't I'm stand to see my own apologize to her yeah. the time. I'm sorry you have to do this. That's yeah, crazy. My girlfriend, she's beautiful, though, man. She got. I got lucky with her, though, man. Like I, t- I hit, a, hit a jackpot. You see her and you see me, you're like, well. How'd that happen? So, somebody's <laughs> weird. Like, what's that song where he, uh, I'm trying to get my wife to figure now that 
I married up. She married way. way <laughs> she is. She's, she's, she's beautiful, man. Man. <laughs> Me and a buddy of mine, Mike Rose and, and, and Joe Hooper, we used to ride our Harleys down in front of the stage. Uh-huh. And if you people watch it all. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, you know, and you'll see this, like, really hot chick oh, yeah. with this dude that there's no way in hell. It's he's That's either me and my girlfriend. <laughs> he's either got an escort for the night or, you know, something's going oh, yeah. on. And we just look at each other and go, how'd that happen? <laughs> Yeah. How'd that happen? You can look his eyebrows. Who's got a fat wallet? Yeah, I did either one. I'm always broke. So, she, yeah, I, like, I, like my, I, she really actually has to like me because I'm like, I'm always like, hey, man, we're like, like say, we got to sell two t shirts, get to the next gig. <laughs> That's not, I told her, so we got to say, baby, listen, honestly, I get paid in a paycheck. But the paycheck, my bank's closed on Saturday. I, might, I, I was joking. I said, you had to Venmo me until Monday. Ooh. <laughs> Luckily, I sold, you know, I did really well. At Life Fit. I sold the hell out of some t shirts. But, I told her, I said, Pam, I'll be honest with you, I hate to say this, but I know you know I'm going to have a good big, big paycheck coming home. I said, but my bank's closed on Saturday, so I really don't know if I'll sell these t-shirts because it wasn't looking good. Oh, yeah. I was worried about it. It was hot. I'm like, I won't be on the side of the road to Monday, but there's been times where she's like, yeah, I got you. No big deal, but I would never. I'm really weird. I don't. I, I'm, I will never uh, let her buy dinner. I'm really weird. Yeah. It pisses me off. And you still open doors for her. Oh, God, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's weird now and we sit, but I do, you know, and I tried to today, like I said, I don't know, she's probably open. It's probably six fifteen. She gets up at six, so she's probably seen the candies I had for her. Yeah. Just just went and bought her a card and candies. Tell her how pretty she looked this morning. She yeah. did look pretty. And see, chivalry is a dying thing nowadays. It is. Think I think the internet's hurt that part. Yeah. These women now, the OnlyFans stuff that they yeah. just making all this killing spreading their butt cheeks. That's killed chivalry, man. It's spread the well, butt cheeks. I- <laughs> Well, I mean, there's uh, there's Straight one girl, the there's one girl on OnlyFans, okay. and I seen her little biography thing they did on her. Oh wow! And she just videos her feet. Oh man! It's just her feet. It's weird. And she takes care of her feet, and she gets you know paints different. I'd be upset if I opened it up, paying all that money, and she sees some toe jam. Yeah, I mean, you Where's know. Where's the titties at? <laughs> Give Let's me something. The middle. Let's meet the middle. Let me show me a belly button. <laughs> something. <laughs> Sorry, man. But it's just, she's back here laughing. Oh, she's having a fun she's time. She's having a good time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just weird, some of the stuff that I, goes on. But and I like feet. The feet. You got to have some pretty feet. I like pretty feet. I ain't going to lie. But I think my girlfriend's got, she's got bigger feet than me. Hers are pretty big. That made me intimidating. Because if one goes up my ass, if I get out of hand, it's going to hurt. Oh, yeah. It's going to hurt. She's got tall. She's tall. She's about as tall as I am for a girl, too. So she's tall. Yeah. So, long foot. Like, foot's like this big. Yeah. It's going to hurt. Where's those, she, she, can she, she wear your shoes? Is that, Oh, yeah. She can easily wear my flip. My flip house probably. <laughs> Clay, Clay this, is gonna have to, this is a joke for Clay. He's probably going to watch this. But Clay jokes <laughs> about me only having a 10 size foot. Yeah. I have a 10. That's it. Um, nine and a half, ten, and in clay every night. I'm telling you, every night, not just not one night. Every night I walk on the stage, in my boots. Yeah, he'll tell three thousand people, "Look at these small ass feet." <laughs> <laughs> so that's funny. So that's a big joke. I was almost gonna try to find some double size shoes. Yeah, to wear on one gig, just walk out big feet. Just, to, just get the make, bozo shoes, man. I need to. Clay, he, he gets so cracked up. He's I've never seen no. He don't like feet either because he makes. People put their shoes on. <laughs> but pay, uh, the tour manager wouldn't have come out bare for Man, put their feet up. Man. Mine, though, man. Mine's so small. He gets cracked up, dude. It's funny. What size foot he got? 10. He has, like, he has, I don't know, like 14, 16. Good God. He's a, he's a big old guy, man. But he's lost a bunch of weight. Yeah, I noticed that. A lot of weight. Yeah, but he's he got a big foot, man. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't want to mess that dude. I no. just tell you. Um. Yeah, was, I thought they don't have no security because Clay is security. <laughs> and, and their fan, but their fans, man, don't really get rowdy, man. They don't really get rowdy. Like they don't like they don't write. I've never seen anybody try to mess with them like that. No, they're pretty. They beat the hell each other a lot of times. Yeah. I've seen it during Redneck Tan. It's always during my set. Why I see is the fight that? In, in, on a Thursday night. <laughs> we did a Thursday night show in <laughs> was it Kentucky, Lexington, Lexington. And I mean, a girl. She, this bitch was bad though. She wasn't no joke. And uh, she literally during. I think that dun dun dun. I'm thinking about it, but this time I seen it. I seen her. She dodged one. She hit a girl. Hit another girl. Dunk. Hit another girl. They're trying to get her, and I was going um security. And everybody's like security. Yeah. <laughs> she was punching girls and dodging, and then she just took off at a sprint. And then when the show was over, the bouncer said, "Yeah, that girl uh, 
got loose and they caught her in the parking lot and she bit one of the bouncer men on the tit. Ooh. Hit him. So I think that's called meth. That was a meth girl. And she Probably. Was meth. But that was powerful. Oh, yeah. She was digging and dodging like that and biting people on the breast. That was awesome. I'm jealous, <laughs> I'm jealous about that, too. Because like, I, I, I'm jealous. I've never fought like that. I've never been able to dodge. and I try not to fight. Kind of like the boxing. Now, imagine her Mike Tyson in a titty on a grown-ass man trying to tackle her. Like, Well, I mean. I'd be a or a vampire one. He bit an ear, so, I yeah. mean, she's biting tits. I mean, it, it was, and that truly happened in Lexington. They can vouch for it. I think we were playing the uh, by a train depot. An old train depot. Yeah. Awesome ass venue. Like old historical looking venue with a train right behind it. Like a train train. Huh. So I haven't been up there to any oh, venues. Awesome. Well many venues. There's a few venues in Lexington. So Yeah, it's always fun. I have to ask um, yeah. I'll have to ask Taylor about that because she actually is from Lexington. Nice. So I nice get Taylor. Taylor Hughes. God, I know the name. Yeah, she's an artist. Songwriter. I'm gonna look her up tonight. Yeah. Taylor, I'm looking up Taylor. She's pretty cool. That's awesome, dude. You did a lot of songwriters. I've never wrote for a mainstream artist. Yeah. Just wrote with the legs, and they're big as hell, so they're, they're, they're doing really good. I mean, mm-hmm. Like I said, you look at their views, man. They're, that's awesome. Yeah. And I uh, I used to do – I did a show with a guy that writes for Jacob Bryant, and he was a really nice guy. You know Jacob Bryant? No. Oh, look him up. He's awesome, dude. He's like the only big-time kind of big, bigger celebrity kind of guy that likes the way about death. I've never had any big artist reach out and like it like that. Yeah. I've had one, Jacob Bryant. It was the only main, out of 900,000 views, it was a million. Yeah. A viral video, not any other known singers liked it. But Jacob Bryant did. And you hear this, you hear, you don't get me. It's like, it's funny because I think I just got this, people don't fuck with me. Yeah. I'm just like that wild dude. I'm telling you, man, they don't. Uh, Matt and Nashville don't. Yeah. I was, I was on a, uh, I was like I said, I was on the day in Nashville, and I did it that was years ago, and then I just get wild. They're scared of guys like me. You're because uncontrollable. We're, 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 yeah, it's it's like, what's he going to do? And they're just scared of it. Yeah. You know, and I don't know if it's, it's like, I don't, you know, and I'm thinking, guys, I don't think they thought I would make it this far. A lot of people didn't. I had a lot of hate when early on doing the well, doing yeah. shit kind of songs. And now that I'm doing, I've had a lot of people that have talked shit about me that in my DMs. Saying, man, we're proud of you. We knew you could do it. It's just funny. Mm-hmm. I, I'm always respectful, but thank you. But, I mean, I was like, y'all, y'all did not. You know, it's just funny how I've actually, you know, getting to finally do something cool. Yeah. And never had to go, I call it S and the D. I didn't have to suck nobody's. Yeah. I, didn't. I just went the hard way. It took me a long time. Somebody yeah. told me one producer and me got in an argument match. He Bless his soul. He died. He's passed away now. But he uh, got in an argument match. said, you're your worst enemy because you're so silly. I said, man, I'm just me. I'm not going to change. I can put my stuff out. You know, and and that's the thing with, you know, this whole stuff. I had a lot of people telling me I wouldn't be able to. And, and oh, he, awesome. he starts <laughs> he starts this and he don't finish and he doesn't follow through, you know, and all that other stuff. And then I'm sitting here talking to different artists and, and having fun. And mm-hmm. the show actually is actually starting to take off, man. I I've mean, seen it everywhere. That's awesome. I seen it. <laughs> you did. All all kind of artists, yeah. Cool. I love it. But yeah, I never had to I never had to eat nobody's lunch. I I'm not going dinner. to. I made I made my own dinner, you know. I'm not going to. I mean, to me it's more about the pride of it, mm-hmm. you know, self-pride. Because I know at the end of the day, yes, I had some help from mm-hmm. some good friends and some artist has, yeah. you know, helped me get another artist and stuff like that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I know I had the idea. Yeah. I saw it through, and I went on through. Absolutely. That's what I did in mine. I've seen it happening, and I've seen a lot of people around me that got quickly successful by following that guideline of, hey, man, let's go. Oh, the cookie cutter. Let's, let's follow it. I've seen it work really good for them. I mean, I've seen them burn a few bridges, and – Still work really good for them. I've seen yeah. these people have uh, said, I'm never going to work. I was too silly. I know they see what I'm doing now, you know, and, and that's fine. They're living in the mansions and driving a big tour bus, and that's fine. I'd rather still be driving a truck and working hard because I know that one day, you know, it's going to work. It's going to have to work. Yeah. You know, I know the stuff coming out. I'm a little worried about it because the stuff coming out, the next four songs is straight. It's, I won't say it's cookie cutter. But it's 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 commercial. I, I've got it sounding just like 
Well, it's your take on it. It's my, it is my take. And I, I like to hear when we're off the air some of the stuff. But it's, it's, uh, it's commercial, but it's still no auto tune. Mm-hmm. Still got my rasp. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, uh, the one everybody told you to quit doing. There's two songs that's more like country. There's, one, there's two, actually, I lied. There's only two commercial songs. One's called yeah. God Only Knows. And uh, I was going to pitch it. I was going to try to pitch it to Morgan Wallen, but I'm thinking, no, I think it needs to be mine. And I got one called Wishing She Was You. And they're pretty commercial, man, but they're still heavy rock tone. Yeah. Josh Bright's a badass. I don't know if you ever heard of him play, but it's Uncle Cracker's guitar player, mm-hmm. also producer. Yeah. Dude is, I mean, he played every instrument on this thing by himself. Awesome. He's a badass. Like, he makes me look. I'm, I don't even want to touch a guitar. Out well, say I always like. <laughs> he's awesome. always liked Uncle Cracker stuff. Yes. And you know. A lot of people said that I, during the new stuff I do with the Lax that I sound like him. I don't get it. Do you think I sound like him? I don't. I. I keep hearing. You know, I'll have to go back and listen to it again. Some of the guy, uh, the bass player in the Lax, Jeff, was telling me they they say they toured with Uncle Cracker. Mm-hmm. And he said, "Man, you you got to sound like that Uncle Cracker a lot. You get that flat." I'm like, "Do I really? I got to listen to him again." I'm like. I just think I sound like me, but apparently I sound like Uncle Cracker on some of the stuff. Which the song I've got coming out with him here soon, we shot a video for. I think I sounded. I've cleaned up my tone, mm-hmm. kind of went down to. I've lowered my register. Yeah. So I don't because when I go up high, it goes to a rasp. Yeah. I'm trying to tone it down to more country, to show my versatility. Cause I could sing more country if I needed to. I mm-hmm. can force myself to do it. But this four song EP. <laughs> There's it's not true. it. I got a song called Over, man. It's it's cool. It's country. To me, it's my Keith Whitley style country. Slow song. Yeah. And I got beer joining some Bibles. It's like Cody Jink style. Yeah. Outlaw country. And I've got the two commercially kind of sound and stuff. So it's a good four song. Now, now I got to go reserve my copy. I'm hoping. I'm, I really, I would love to. <laughs> I would love to. I made like number 16 on the hot playlist or some 300. I did something this past weekend on Titty Tattoos, which is it's probably, I don't know what it is. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, because you just dropped that the other day. Yeah, I've got thirty, almost close to 30,000 views on YouTube. Well, I know I, I did two of them. Yeah, but I, don't, I don't know how that's <laughs> happened, uh, but I've gained some subscribers. But like I said, man, I just, um, we just dropped it. We didn't, prom- I mean, we promoted it for a week, but I didn't put no premiere, no uh, link out. <laughs> we just dropped it. I mean, I literally looked down didn't know it was out. <laughs> yeah. I was also in different time zones. Yeah. So it's supposed to come. I mean, it just dropped, and I mean, I don't know what it'll do. It could. I mean, it could. I could wake up tomorrow and it'd be at a million views. You never know. I think Julie might be over there watching it. Who knows? Watching that titty song, Julie. Oh, she's it's, already it's seen song. it. It's clean, and then you know, there's extended version. Mm-hmm. There's extended version that we could. I, don't, I may release the audio of the extended version. It was too long. Yeah. But the best line it says. After it says, when they all get old, I'm sure we'll all agree, when them titties start sagging, they'll become two sleeves. <laughs> there was a part that got cut that breaks down. It's, it's, I'm going to recite to you. It said, uh, some might look spiritual, trailer trash, and pitiful. But give them a break. That's their start to put some religion closer to the heart. <laughs> some might look biblical. You may see Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John just above the nipple. That's just her fooling. That's all the guys she had been screwing. <laughs> that was, it didn't make the. It, it's in the song, but yeah. the video was too long. We had to get down to like four. It was almost like six minutes. I know it's a long one. To me, it could have been ten minutes to be a miracle. But I, I, it's you know, it's titty songs. I like. I it. hate playing it live. It sucks playing it live. It just don't, to me. It's like I'm a comedian. I'm not a comedian, but that's what they take it when I do it live. It, and how do you segue out of that? All right, we should do a TV song. We'll do beer toys and Bibles. Like, you just, it's just hard to sick me out of that. When you yeah. do that, it's like, fuck. It almost needs to be my last damn song. Well, that's fiction. So you <laughs> could do it for, like, encore maybe or something? Well, they don't ever encore me. There's never enough time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun being – it's, 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 it's hard. The first slot's really tough. Yeah. I'm proud to have it. I wouldn't trade the world for it. The, the first slot, it's, it's really tough, man. They're not drunk. They're loud. They're just getting there and confused as hell. Why this fat guy with the guitars out there? Yeah. Right? The lax out there. You know, they're pissed. A lot yeah. of them. And this, this, maybe it'll be different. Like I said, I'm out there also with Justin Champagne. Mm-hmm. You looked him up? No. Nope. He's huge. He's just all Snoop Dogg. He's, he's awesome, dude. Hell of a voice. I've met him once. Um, He's awesome. He can sing and rap. He's a good singer. Cool. Badass singer. Like, probably, probably, I guarantee, way better than me. I've listened to him. I've just heard him. He's had a big, hell of a voice, man. So. You got me looking up August. Yeah, Justin Champagne, dude, he's, uh, he's going to be on the tour coming up August through October. It's the, uh, I'm going to tell you what's called right now. I'll get my phone out. My girlfriend says, I'm going to hit you in your face when you get to, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she, she said, 
Uh, it's called the yeah, we're gonna be on the party from the South tour. It starts in August. And it's Justin Champagne Land Lax. It's gonna be fun. Cool. Cause he is a hell of an artist too. He's good. I ain't driving to Ohio for the show though. I'm telling you. Murfreesboro, the Hop Springs is the closest one to here. I think. Mount Vernon, Kentucky's. I don't know where Mount Vernon, Kentucky is, but Mount Vernon is four hours from my house. Yeah. Nice. I'm in Gallatin's. The, I'm in Portland. I'm kind of. I, I I don't really have a house. I'm weird. I stay at a hotel. Every every now and then I sleep at my girlfriend's couch. To her parents watching. I sleep on her couch every night. A good child. Mm-hmm. And then I sleep. I, I hang out at my house during the day to take my grandma and my mom. Well, my, yeah. my grandma basically she can't drive anymore. Yeah. So I'm like between hotels. My girlfriend visit her. I don't even have a house. You know, right now. Right now, I don't think I'm you need everywhere. one. No. Because I, I spend more time in my truck as my office. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, on my girlfriend's couch, hanging out with my grandma <laughs> in weird random hotel rooms with bullet holes and ceilings. Cleaning house yeah. and cooking breakfast for your girlfriend. Cleaning house. What's up, Tony? <laughs> Tony's awesome. That's my girlfriend's dad. He's cool as hell. You know, her mom and dad really, uh, really like the titty song. They got the approval. I actually had to play it. She made me play it for her parents. You know how awkward that was at a cookout? Oh, I can imagine. Her mom goes, it's cute. I'm like, I'm glad you saw that. Because it, it, it could be nasty. Oh, yeah. It, it, could it be. No one wears titty, you know. But I showed them the video before it came out. They were big fans of it. Her mom really liked it. Did you change it to breastesses? No, I straight up said titty. <laughs> titty, <laughs> titty. You can't even get mad to wear a titty, you know. You can't really because, I mean, guys, girls, everybody's got titties. Yeah. I think the, I've sound there's not many titties. There's a bunch of titty songs out there, but just straight up tittied. Uh, it's, I think it's the McGovern Jithery mm-hmm. song. Um, titties. Titties and beer. Uh, Rodney Carrington. Titties and beer. Then the McGovern Jithery's titty, Titties Beer. And then my titties song, which no. I actually messaged Rodney Carrington. It's hard to get a hold of. I know it's a publisher, but I'm trying to reach out to get some titty support, like get some brawls, <laughs> get some brawls with the song. But I mean, it's just, you know, I, mean, I don't know, man. So, I mean, hey, Rodney, check out my titty song. Yeah. You know, like, hell, if you want to sing it, we'll sing one together. You know, like, Rodney was, I, raised, I was raised on Rodney. Oh, yeah, I was. Dude, my God. I love and, uh, Rodney. Tim Port, bless his heart, Tim Wilson. Mm-hmm. Love Tim Wilson. Tim Wilson was awesome. Hey, yeah, I, you know, some people don't know this. When I was 24, I used to do stand-up comedy. I, I ain't probably supposed to talk about it, but I did. I was a stand-up comedian in Nashville. I was 23 and 24. Yeah. And I, when I say guys, that in my first month, I won competitions. <laughs> one, one, one competitions. Like, to be opening for Zanies for Ralphie May's wife, Lana Turner. Yeah. And I was on like, two Zany shows. I swear to God, in Comedy Catch in Chattanooga. My phone's ringing. I don't know why it rings all the time. Ain't nobody important. My dad. He's kind of important. It might kinda, be your wife. Had a, he, had a, he had a purpose for being here today. But yeah, um, <coughs> I keep her on there. My girlfriend on the, on the uh, me and a picture of her on there. So, like, I tell her all the time, babe, I can't. Uh, I can never, like, get girls' numbers because I go to do it. You'll show you me up there. So that right there. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that as a reminder too when I'm gone. Uh-huh. And I got something to wait on. When, you know, when I get home. It's, well, it's always nice to have a little picture or something. You know. Oh yeah, I ain't trying to hide her. Some guys will hide their girlfriend, and don't put their relationships on there because it kills their fan base. But yeah, I just. Don't I'd know. rather my fan base want me for the music because they ain't want me to lay in the bed with me. I promise you that. I'm too damn busy for a girlfriend. Yeah. I've got one here and I barely see her. Mm. Travelings. So, but yeah, it's um. Yeah, man, I'm just, I would love to reach out to like Rodney Carrington. Yeah, his, the one song he does is, uh, and I love the hell out of it because of the way it's arranged and everything else. Uh-huh. And when he does it live, because. Show them to me. Show them to me. Yeah, it's a good one. I love that song. Yeah, and it's just a good song. Yeah. Um, I like that. But I like, he has some serious songs. I'm trying to think what it was. Uh. The woman he did with some woman is a really serious one because he's a hell of a singer. I think he was trying to make when Alan Jackson was trying to make it. Just never could do it. Went the comedy way and blew up. Yeah, well, you know. It's hard. He, he talks about it. But, yeah, I've, I've, uh, I'm not a comedian, but I have a fun sense of humor. Like, when you see Blake Shelton on stage cracking jokes, that's kind of mm-hmm. how I am. In between songs, I'm like, hey, how do I'm like, you're going to love this next one. You know, I just myself, and then I sing a song. Yeah. I think that throws a lot of people off. Um, and a lot of people love that, too. Yeah. And, I mean, I want you to know on stage I'm going to be the same way at your dinner table at your house and at my merchandise booth. It's no put on. Well, you're the same way here at the kitchen yeah. table, too. So Absolutely. It's just you got to be – I think I think you have to be – I mean, look around up church. He's never changed. That's mm-hmm. about the only artist I know of in Tennessee that literally never – he's never changed. Yeah. Dude, he's literally stayed on outlaw. Yeah. I'm not signing. He don't have to sign. 
Yeah. Dude, dude's a good friend of mine that did this interview, uh, Drew Southwind. Did, uh, he has a podcast, and he did the uh, skin review with uh, Upchurch. It was mm-hmm. interesting. If you listen to him, watch it. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, I learned a lot from that video about that dude. So I opened up for Mr. Ryan um, 10 years ago, nine years ago. I forgot, eight years ago or something like that. Oh, dude, you ought to call him and say, hey, can we do it again? I don't, I need to do a show. I don't think God does shows anymore. I don't know. I don't know. I ain't seen him do a show in a while. I haven't heard of him doing anything. Probably don't have to. <laughs> hey, he might have made his money and cashed out. He did, said, they put a video out. Um, God, he put a song out in like a few hours. It was already 40,000 views. Mm-hmm. Damn, it's just, that's awesome. That's when you know you've made it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I got 30,000 in five days, you know. So. Well, I mean, that's kind of like uh, you're kind of getting there. I kind of am. I hope the next, I think the next one's going to do way better. I was really thinking Titty Tattoo is going to touch the White House area and just touch America. <laughs> and I could go on that, and I could finally go on that secret perverted <laughs> tour called Dustin Spears Touching America Tour. There you go. Yeah, just touching you a little bit <laughs> with his titty tattoo. I mean, it's a fun song. I can't wait to play it again. Now that it's out, it's going to make more sense, I think, this round. Mm-hmm. Like people's going to, and I got the shirts, man, and I ain't yeah. going to sign no titties because my name's on it. Exactly. I'm going to I'm gonna have, to, I'm gonna have to either FaceTime my girlfriend or listen. That's what I'm doing. I'm not cheating or nothing. Yeah, and just put it all it's out awkward. there. It's I, I don't, awkward. I don't like doing it, and I didn't. I did it as a joke when I first started this tour, but mm-hmm. someone brought to my attention uh, bigger promoters said, hey, man, you know, it's always fun, but, you know, some of these venues are also all-ages venues. Yeah, you got to be careful. So to not know, um, I wouldn't do it, period, just to make yeah. sure. And then I was like, yeah. So I cut it out. Now, some of the 21 and up venues, if they come up and ask me to do it and they are drinking, then they say it's the venue's fault if they're in underage. So yeah. I can't get in trouble if I have to sign my card. I'll touch them. I'll just take a pencil and just draw on there. Oh, yeah. Part here. It's never actually on the nipple, you know. That tickle probably. Oh, yeah, you got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, you know. So. No hand placement. And just... it's ne- I mean, I ain't going to sign. I shouldn't say It's not a titty you want to sign. There's never been one. I've been like, God, I can't wait to sign that one. I'm going to yeah. write a book on that one. You scroll. know, uh, to be honest with you, I, <laughs> never one you I could be like a huge mega star or something like that, mm-hmm. and I don't think I would really actually want to write on a woman's body. I don't I, I don't want to disrespect my it, Any more so uncomfortable because I wouldn't want my girlfriend writing on a wiener. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't want her going, let me see your balls, but write my name on it. I wouldn't want her doing that, you know, because I care about yeah. her. I, I wouldn't, you know, so it, anymore it's kind of, and, and Justin Moore, he was talking about the time that my buddy went and saw him. He had a refused sign a bra. Mm-hmm. His wife wouldn't like it. I'm not married, but as respect for her, I probably won't. This tour, I'm going to try, I mean, you know, I'm praying they don't want I'm praying the shirts with my name on them will be enough. This it should be. I, just, I try to respect women. Women are not, you ain't supposed to do that. I think women should have more respect for Seth. That's the problem. They should be more respectful and go, I need to cover up, man, for my man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, I know it's crazy and you know, pretty cliche, but you know, it's more attractive when a woman doesn't pull them out. Yeah. It's all, it's all a game. We're all trying well, I mean, to see them. You know, it, it, <laughs> you know, but if I, you, you want yeah, to see them, but you don't. You want to see them, but, you know. You, Not that much. You, I see them. Well, I mean, you want to be really able to. look right at them. They. That one girl this weekend, man, I, I mean, she just threw them out. There wasn't none there. I, I think I had bigger titties than the girl on the front row. I was like, Lord mercy. She ain't got none. <laughs> she ain't got no tits. You know, I was like, Forrest Gump, she ain't got none. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, she didn't have none. And I was like, where'd they go? They, they were there, but I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. It was, it there ain't no telling. During tea tattoo, she's like, and then one girl woman to butt chug a beer i'm like i don't drink beer especially have my ass i ain't doing that i don't know what that's gonna be how in the hell do you do that i don't know they're insisted be on I, people are weird on my and and murphy elmore was talking uh saturday he says just in your set dude you, you do something to them i like fuck them up man they just get yeah. like whoo like hey they can't hold back the weirdness <laughs> they just get the damn like that guy screaming boy your dick i'm like why like no 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 but it's weird. They they get weird. I'm not used to that part of it. I'm not used to weirdism. Well, I don't know. I, I don't think I could do it it's either. Weird. I mean. And it's awkward. When you're out there, I'm just with the guitar, man. And it's almost, I think that's why, if I had a band, it wouldn't be as funny. It would be rocking. But when you just got a guitar and you go, hey, y'all doing? <sighs> Breathe it all, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> y'all having a good time? You're like, I can't help but just smile, man. And yeah, and then people there, hollering right? back up at you, and it's just you, and you yeah, stop to like, go, what? We're going to sing a titty <laughs> song, and they just, they just lose their shit, man. 
it's fun. And when they don't lose their shit, and when it's awkward, because that song's long. And you mm-hmm. just don't cut it off. Because I've no. got halfway through it before I go, this is not fucking working. I wish I could just, I want to dig in a hole right now laying it. Yeah. It's not working. And sometimes it, it works. I usually like to, I mean, the way I approach it is I like to go, who all likes titties? And if they mm-hmm. get to screaming, but you, you're screwed if they don't scream. Yeah, because like you done opened asking. it up. And I'm like, because if, like, if it don't work the first time, they don't scream. I'm like, all right, well, we're not going to do this song. Then at the end, they go, sure, you might like titties. And if they get to screaming, you know, you got to almost find a way to work it in. Yeah. And so. Timing think, is I'm everything. I'm I'm going to start doing that. And during the middle of my set, go, who likes titties? And you go, well, I ain't got no titty songs. And then start playing my normal songs. Yeah. At the end of the night, whip that bitch out one time. Just. I find the most, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just the funny part. It's so country. Yeah. It was really country. I, I yeah, it all was. Guitar licks. I ain't, that's why I ain't no guitar player. I just did some. Yeah, just simple. at the end of the night, go. Yeah, you know. I kind of hate to say this, anyways. but just you know, for your mom and them, you know. I do have a titty song. I, I forgot about it, but I forgot. I used to write all that. I write. I'm just a writer. Yeah. So I've, I'm wrote one. I've been writing one real bad. I'm not gonna put it out, but it's 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 gonna be called. Uh, who all ain't she fucked? <laughs> <laughs> that's about my, well, it's about somebody I used to know and kind of laying in bed with. But it's like uh, I, I had a verse that, uh, you know, she effed a, she, she effed a, what, effed a preacher down in Panama, uh, a teacher in New Orleans. I'm getting to wonder if she fucked everybody but me. She fucked a dealership in Denver. Now she's driving a new truck. <laughs> it ain't how many, but who all ain't she fucked? Yeah. That's going to be when I was, I mean, that's bad. I shouldn't even tell her I feel bad to her. That's the kind of stuff I write just for me. Yeah. Just to go, man, that's, I could pitch this to somebody, you know. I love writing. Yeah, but when this you show know, comes out, you're going to have like 15. I wrote one about a girl with cerebral palsy. I wrote one called Sarah Smiles. And I wrote one called, uh, who all ain't she fucked? I just, I just like to write. Yeah. But I don't always play them out. And I've got some that I've showed. Clay asked me one time. Just backstage in Nashville, what's the dirtiest song you wrote? I said, Oh, oh my dude. god, and I played what he he lost it. Oh, I he can imagine. Tour, because y'all come listen to this. Like, I said, Man, I've wrote years, I mean, I'm a writer. Yeah. It don't mean I'm a, I don't think that says who I am. You know, if I start playing them out, those kind of songs, it's definitely gonna put me as a comedian or a mm-hmm. walker. Yeah, you know, and I don't want, I'm, I'm not I'm trying to get to heaven, man. I feel like now I'm gonna get to heaven because I have been saved. I'll say it, I've been, I know God, I've been saved. But I feel like I'm going to have to cut grass in heaven. Like, I feel like we'll have choice. Oh, yeah. Like, I, the line's going to be behind me hearing all the shit I've did. I'm like, man. You're going to be doing cleaning your windows. You're going to duty, buddy. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm real. I just. You're going to be mopping the streets, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, them streets will be a little muddy. I'm like, <laughs> I ain't going to have to go mop me, bro. Yeah, come on, man. Y'all got a hand on there. Like, you know, it's, that's a bad but, uh, movement to do. But, you ever heard of Bobby Roddick? I haven't. I don't think I have. Bobby Roddick. He was. Um, he was a big time writer, huh. but he cut out one of his own little albums one time, uh-huh. and it was full of like comedy songs. I mean, he had a song that was called uh, "Nag, Nag, Nag," and part of the chorus was all she ever does is nag, nag, nag. Don't do this, don't do that. Uh huh. Take out garbage, put it straight. I mean, I like it was the one who sings that song. She only bitches when she breathes. That's a good. Oh one. God, that's a good one too. Who was that? I heard it the other day on the way. I was on the way to the show. I do listen to a lot of music. When I'm, like, I have five hours. I listen drive, to right? Goofy's. in the morning. Yeah, I have five hour drive. I'll just listen. I'll just find them. I'll get into a rabbit hole of shit. I find Goofy oh. stuff. Yeah, I love Goofy. I do, and I'm, I'm and I got one called First of May" by Tim Colt. It's a First of May," and it's a it's an awesome song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you look that one up later. It's gonna be. I'm gonna sing on here. It's pretty rough. But I don't know, man. I just. uh you won't get all these at my show. You, the dirtiest you'll get is just titty tattoos, and we about to F. We yeah. about to F is a clean song. It ain't nothing dirty. <laughs> love each other. You know, go ahead. And a lot of people are mistaken. I heard a lot of people saying, go ahead, honey. S- sleep all night in that dress. I'm like, no, it's slip on out of that dress. Mm-hmm. People have been thinking I was saying sleep all night. I'm like, you won't want her to sleep in that dress. You're trying to get that dress off before y'all get in that sack, you know. What was that song? I'm trying to look it up now. I can't remember. She what. only bitches when she breathes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to look this up. Yeah. Only. Bitches when she breathes. I can't think of Bitches. Something. It's funny, though. When. It's a weird song. He wrote it different. He talks. It slows down. It goes like a half time and speeds breeze. up to a double time. It's two different songs in one. 
I like it when they do that. Like Hardy, Hardy's songs. phenomenal with that shit. The Mockingbird yeah. and the Crow is two songs. Freddie B. That's it, yeah. Freddie B, yeah. She said if we got married, buy a house and some land, pick out our circles of trust, those matching wedding bands. Yeah. Dude, it's got the whole lyrics down here. Yeah. Life would be so sweet. That's when I knew I made I'd it. When, treat- I, when I looked at one of my songs I wrote for the Lax. Yeah. I get to be on the A to Z lyrics, my song lyrics. And yeah. I just wrote, that's, when I, that's when I was really excited about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, but my songs don't have A to Z lyrics yet. I don't know why. I'm, probably because I'm not that I'm, uh, I'm not that big. You know, that's probably why I don't get to be on A to Z lyrics. Because I've tried to look. I've rabbit holed my name before, just curious. And my net worth was like, they had my net worth all wrong. Don't you love how they do that? I don't know how to do that. I was like, I ain't worth that. Are they doing the net worth, uh, net worth what it actually is or what your dreams are? <laughs> I'm thinking that's sick one. There's no way. I was like, man. Somebody said, you ever Google you, man? You just, I was like, yeah, Google me sometimes. I went to a store today and I, and I was like, uh, I told the woman I was doing a benefit. I was trying to buy a paper. Oh, look at there. There you are. Where is it at? On Google. Yeah. Dustin Spears slash songs. Yeah, it's got a bunch. And that's, it's, uh, I can't get in trouble. I'm at that level to where I can't get in trouble. Like I said, I can't get in trouble now. Yeah. Like I really can't. Like if I do something bad, it'll affect it. Now, see, that one looks interesting. She ain't here for leaving. Yeah, that, oh God, that's old school. I've got old, probably millions of songs, but that's yeah. my old Facebook. I got my old manager that, uh, um, somehow, Stole my idea. I don't know what they did, but I can't even get in that page. So there's two. There's one Dustin Spears music, and that's the bad one. I don't get on there anymore. Mm-hmm. There's Dustin Spears art page. Uh, yeah, well, I found one of those Dirt Rock Empire. That's where I'm at. Yeah, that's the yeah. level I work out. They're they're great people, man. Um, <laughs> they're a, a good. I get the right at the top. Yeah, we're about to f. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, man, that was fun to make, man. Those guys think that they really helped me put that song out, make it look good. The video team. I mean, it was there. Yeah, they don't. They don't have to do what they do for me. You know what I'm saying? They really. I think they. They tell me they believe in me, man, and I guess they seen something, you know, that other people didn't see, and they really. They really got behind me, man. Now, see, now here's something. I just got to point this out. Yeah. And I know y'all can't see this, but this we're talking. Yeah. Uh, your look here. Uh huh. I like the other look better. With the backwards hat. Yeah. Well, I'm growing my hair out long now. That one right there. I like that one better. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's all the. There's a mullet that that was back on the TV, Davey. I've actually made television. Yeah. Biggest moment in my life when I, when I screwed the lyrics up. If you watch that <laughs> video, I went to the last part where it's real. I went. Uh, I forgot what I said, but you see me go. Uh, what did I say? Uh, when the days are. I went, ooh, ooh, ooh. And some dude goes, man, I love how emotional you got. Almost crying. I was like, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that's I it. Like my old <laughs> oh, man, see me. It was fun. What the days? Ooh. That's what I did. Ooh. Yeah, it was fun. It was sucky performance. My my band was going too fast. We were all nervous. They don't give you no time to rehearse on television. No, they don't. Yeah, one run through, and, and I was thinking it was just weird because when you're when you're on day in Nashville, you're looking. There's a TV. There's like a kitchen right here in front of you. We're looking ready to film a kitchen. Mm-hmm. They literally go around order, and you wait your turn and do your segments. It's like a circle. yeah. The cr- I mean, it's weird, man. But they say we point, you go. Yeah. And uh, we did. We just went too fast. Oh yeah. <laughs> You know, my drummer, they, he was he was cranking up, man. Like, oh, and a lot of people do get nervous. I believe it or not, just with my little yeah. stuff, I still get nervous for every show. Yeah. I get nervous for half six. I, I, you still get nervous. It, it's been so long. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. Like what day I was like, <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? I'm like, she heard me going. We can do this. We're gonna do this. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, I practice. I'm, I'm just reciting my words. I don't know what I'm doing. Pep talk. Get out of my league. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to catch up for this one. She's like, I cannot believe. Well, it's like uh, on that movie, What Women Want with Mel Gibson. And he was sitting in the bathroom going, okay, come on. We've got this. We've got this. <laughs> yeah. 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 She's, she's, she's beautiful. It's hard to it's hard to focus for her, man. I told her some more. I said, what did she say? Something I said. I, yeah, I told her some more. I said, I was, I, was, I was laying on the couch and waiting for her to get ready because we leave at the same time. I had to run errands and like, mm-hmm. run, run day. And I left the same time she did for her work. And then she was uh, – I was like, man, you really look beautiful, Dan. She goes, are you serious? Like, I'm lying. Like, no, I'm being dead. I mean, for once, I mean, I don't know too many women look that good anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, she does. Wakes up. Don't even have to put makeup on. Like, How yeah. do you do that? I feel like I have to, like, really work at it. Like, tuck my 
selfies up here and like yeah man, it's just crazy so. my daughter had to teach me yeah because i was taking pictures <laughs> straight on you know God, and you got the whole little yeah gobble thing yeah. and everything else she's like no you got to hold it up here oh, yeah. and you got to do a little bit of a sideways yep. and i'm like i'm not doing the chicken lips i'm not doing it yeah yeah I'm, I'm not doing the pucker it ain't gonna happen oh yeah the pucker lips <laughs> oh pucker fucker off our rubber yeah that's, like, yeah, that's funny that's good she, she uh, yeah she, she does good herself <laughs> she actually don't take a lot of pictures it's weird i know some really pretty women sometimes don't take a lot of pictures a lot of them don't take pictures mm -hmm. it's weird and it's one and some girls take too many pictures you know i think i think if a woman or a man is actually with who they're supposed to be with they cut out a lot of the bullshit yeah yeah we've been training i'm I'm, she, I'm training her how to like cut all the bullshit out yeah yeah I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she cut all bullshit out i'd be i'll be I'd already be gone yeah. mm -hmm. i'm the one that's an idiot yeah i'm wild i've calmed down though i've, <laughs> I've calmed down well this, the first tour brought me in we got wild a few nights, you know. A few nights I missed getting up to go get a shower in the hotel room. I forgot to get off the bus. I was too drunk. Yeah, but you just get drunker on there when you ain't got to drive. For some reason when you know you don't have to even drive, mm. fans get you drunk. So. Well, yeah. But I'm maturing up, man. I'm the year, year into this. I'm, I'm maturing. So I care about my liver this year. I'm telling oh yes. Clay, I tell Clay, I care about my liver this year. I'm, I'm trying to live another year. To maybe one day I could have my career. I want my goal is to have a band one day get to come with me. I miss playing with the band. So, I bet. It, I it, mean, it sucks by yourself with guitar. And I've had a lot of people tell me that mm -hmm. you know do the acoustic sets and stuff, or they're on the first or the second. Yeah. You know, it's cool because you're there, but yeah, be cool. I, I even think, dude, I'll tell you the spot to get, and the second spot's a shit. Mm -hmm. You don't understand it. The second because they're not drunk, but they're there. Oh yeah, you're the, the support. They call it the support. Yeah, I've got to do it twice on that tour, due to whatever. There was it was some nights because I'm with Dirt Rock, so I'm with them regardless. Like if, even like I said. If they're doing something on a big festival, open up for some famous, famous people. Yeah. Then I could just do the song I got with them. I won't open up. Right. But something worked out. One of the Virginia shows, and I was a sport. Dude. Awesome. That's the perfect feeling because you're right before the headliner. That's, and I tell people to this day, that's what you want. Yeah. And how long does that set? Still the same, 30 and 30. Yeah. Okay. It's fun. 30 is a good time. 45 is a little too much with acoustic. 45 yeah. is a bitch. Oh, yeah, with an acoustic. I can yeah. pull it up, not bragging, but I've just got so many enough talking between it. See, I hope between now and the end of yeah. summer you're doing full band support yeah. hour and a half. Be nice. That would be awesome. Yeah. I got to get it. I really, I really got to get me a uh, – my bass player was talking. He's got family, and he, 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 is, he has a great job, man. He's a hell of a bass player. I hate to – I wish I could pay enough to get him to quit his job. No, yeah, I'd be right. Well, that's the a, dream. He's, not, he's a good dude, man. A drummer is Jerry. He uh, he's a good drummer. He's solid. I don't have to ever worry about him slowing down, speeding up, or, or fucking up. He's really yeah. good. Um, but man, it's just like, like I said, getting the money there. Mm -hmm. Get, getting. I want to bring the band out, and I got to get a. You know, at this point, I, I think I'm worrying about getting at least the four songs out. Yeah. Get this EP out along with the two I got. That's a good six, seven songs. They mm -hmm. give me like eight or nine songs original already. Yeah. In front of people before they get to the venue, they could hear. Oh yeah. You get my band on in and about two covers, and it'd be a good hour show. Yeah. And hours fun. Hours not too bad with the band. It's different with the band because it's harder on the singing. Yeah. You got to hear yourself. Well, I mean, if you, you know? if you can play to the crowd and do some different things, and and and, I mean, you could stretch it hour ten, hour fifteen. Mm -hmm. You know. I'm looking forward to it one of these days. It'll happen. Just. Go I think it will. I think by next this time next year I should be doing more band stuff. I hope, I pray, you know, because I, I, I so. do want to grow. You want to always see growth, any kind of business, you know. And I think I think uh, I'm on a good track. Like I said, I'm on a great this whole year been touring. So mm -hmm. I hope to hit the next stops um, next year. Yeah, you know, I still follow all the venues I've been at, so I'm hoping to do that. As I see this interview, they're like, "We're not let this fucker play." <laughs> I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna, I mean my, the crowd's wild. I'm not that bad. I don't think I'm that bad. I'm just, you know, I'm what you think. I'm what most of these guys are behind cameras. All these yeah. guys, I, I've met them. I've met you. I've met some biggest people, the biggest people. I've talked to the. I mean, I mean, but they're normal. They just, when you're at that mainstream, you can't do what we're doing right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, you know, doing lights and sound and everything all around town and stuff back in the day. Um, I didn't care who you was. Yeah. I'd help you set up on stage, and I'd be like, okay, what kind of light show you want, you know? I didn't care who you was. 
they want you to you gotta be jelly roll broke that mold though you know what i mean mm -hmm. still himself i watch him still getting wild boy he's funny he's he's funny too oh yeah damn he's funny uh, that's one guy i want to meet i've never i mean he's gave me he, you know he gave me a shout out never met that him. is awesome he gave me a shout, i did i was the first one to save me. look at save me Sixteen thousand views when it first come out yeah i cover that to this day man uh on youtube it, it was uh i think it's hit sixteen thousand views one of my first actual i, I covered a uh where's the dad man it's somewhere some videos yeah i got sixteen thousand views on the bottom i had bald hair i covered save me when he first dropped it yeah i'm smart my guy named the guy that was booking me big J. yeah he was booking me back then he said what you need to do man you need to cover this tag him no mm -hmm. one else has did it y'all learn something again you, when, when your favorite artist does something the quicker you learn it, the quicker you tag it and the quicker you can nail a song oh yeah you can you can you can floop that damn as soon as your favorite artist release release yeah you gotta be on top of that shit oh yeah that's what i did with him he's seen it big guy seen it dude he said uh Hell yeah, sounds good, Bubba. Yeah. But I've never met him. That's one artist. I mean, that's really, it's weird. Most Tennessee guys, like I said, I was just hanging out with Jesse, struggle mm -hmm. last weekend. Um, but, you know, I've just, I've still yet to get to, I've met a security. I've just never, <laughs> I've been in the same, I mean, we're down the road. Because, and I mean, I'm sure the guy would do, he just don't know. He's busy. Yeah. This man's so damn, you know, I'm sure he's so busy now. <coughs> he can wipe his ass, man. It's it's rough when you get to that. You do it in Oh, you get show. to a level, man. Oh, shit. I mean, you get all kinds of stuff going on. It's just I like, know how busy I am now. Yeah. I imagine, you know, I couldn't imagine. It's a, I mean, phew, the no sleep I'm getting now, and luckily, and I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't dip over drugs. I don't do any, most I've ever did was drink. Yeah. I may have smoked marijuana one or two times in my life. Mm-hmm. Don't, I just don't like it. <sighs> I'm not Say a I'm sleeping now. I'm not a cigarette smoker, and I'm very fortunate. That, uh, my, I think my grandfather that passed away was bad on the, the drugs. Oh, yeah. I never met the man, and he was bad. Alcohol and drugs. I wrote Beer Joints and Bible about him. Yeah. Wish I could brought my guitar and played it for you all day, but uh, he was. See if I had a guitar on the wall, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, yeah, he. Uh, I wrote that song, but I don't do drugs, man. I, yeah. I, I'll get a shirt that says I don't do drugs. I don't have to. I'm, uh, I'm already fucked up. Enough. I'm, already, I'm already on that high, baby. So. I'll be, uh, and, and I, I'm. Like I said, I want this to be the most raw show. Yeah. Man. But be perfectly honest with you. You smoke one for you guys. Twin, here, you? no. <laughs> Twenty. Like, I'm light one up now. Twenty-seven years. Damn. Wow. Only thing I do now is I might have a beer every now and then, and I think uh, on the show I've. I like bourbon. I yeah. love the taste of bourbon, but I only want just a little bit. Yeah. It's like I have that one little, just sip it is all I do. I have that celiac disease. I have that now. I can't have bread. No. Yeah. And I can't have beer. Nothing. I can't burp. Nothing. No. It comes. The only thing I can have, you know what's really fucked up? I, the only thing I can have is the women drinks. I can have like wine coolers. <laughs> so you see my fat ass out there sipping on some spiked teas. Like, Take 60 of them, I get the buzz. You know, but it's, it's horrible. Would you like a pink cosmopolitan? I was like, that's like, <laughs> my hip in the ass so right now. It's just like, it's terrible, but that's, that's, all I can, that's all I can drink now. So I don't even drink. I, I really don't really drink. I don't. And, well, I mean. My grandma, you couldn't convince her. She she she, she hates alcohol. You couldn't convince her. She's like, oh, you're at there, you're late. You're late. You're yeah. Late. I bet you're at there late drinking tonight. Yeah, she's she like on my ass, oh, yeah. dude. She'll be watching, but she'll be watching my lives to make sure I ain't got a whiskey in my hand. Boy, oh, yeah. she's old school, man. You could I tell her it's tea. Yeah. Well, she just, she don't, <laughs> she don't ever blame me. I said, Grandma, I'm really not. Really not, I don't feel like drinking. I, I mean, I want to, mm -hmm. but I have shit I have to get done, and I know yeah. that shit will not get done if I'm drunk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I just I just choose not to. You know, I just it's, I have no urge to do it really much. I like having something every now and then just to break the monotony between the water, the Mountain Dew, you know, yeah. just something. I'd rather have a Sprite. I'm going to get into Starry. I like that Starry drink. It's really good. Mm -hmm. It's like a better Sprite. A better Sprite? Tastes good. It's really good. I should introduce my girlfriend to it tonight. We ordered a gluten-free pizza, which is a shit if you get it at the right places. Hey, Julie, write that down when he Starry. comes back on. Starry. Make sure he's got yeah, some Starry. Starry's are good. It's like a little Sprite. What do you mean, no? I guess she don't like Starry's. Have you ever had one? Uh-oh. I'm digging it. Sprite's got, it don't seem like it's got as much of that acidic in it, but it tastes just like it to me, but it's cleaner. I'm addicted to the carbonation. Yeah. I love the carbonation. 
And then I tried some of those. What was the name of those carbonated waters? Ice. Oh, wow, well, yeah. I've heard yeah. of those. They were good. I like yeah. those. But then I got burnt out on them. It's weird. It is weird. But, but yeah, they, uh, the Jack Daniels Down Home Punch, though. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've heard of those, yeah. They're good. My girlfriend, she probably drinks. She likes all those. She's she's twenty. I've got the young one, twenty five years old, man. And she's she's very. Uh, Again, she's, how did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> Dude, I do not know. She's hot, I I thought well, she she when I first met her, she works at Toyota, of where I got my truck. And when I was going there, service department, she'd be there. I'm like, I knew I'd see her from, I'd, I'd see her at karaoke bars mm-hmm. three years ago, and I'd always like, man, she's hot. You know, and I, and then finally she was like going, she was going into, I was going to Toyota like a few years later. And I saw her and I said, hey, you, you're the girl from the restaurant. And she talking to me, I'm thinking, I sure I think I'm an idiot, you know. And man, it wasn't, she started, I think she followed my music and I put this song out called Thick Girls. And mm-hmm. she's like, I like, she's thick, tall and thick. Mm-hmm. You know, anorexic, she's thick and good yeah. looking. And I put this song called Thick Girls out and she messaged me. She's like, I like that song. <laughs> and, I like, and I thought, Got her. Got her. She's like a hook. But then I went into Toyota uh, to get an oil change, and I was just sitting. Man, I promise you, that's how it went. People don't believe me. I was in there getting an oil change one day, and I said, on my phone. She walked by and goes, boo, and sat down, left her desk to come sit down in the waiting room and asked me how my music was going. I knew right then that I sunk that ass and got it real <laughs> Woo! You know, like, I done got that ass. Like, a thick girl song. Let me scare you my scream. That's my rebel scream coming out. It's my dad's redneck in me. But, yeah, I did. I knew right then. And then she said something. It's kind of weirded me out. She said uh, something about she had been to jail one time for something she got in trouble for. And it kind of scared me. Like, damn, wait a second. She's been to jail. She's tough. Mm-hmm. She's my height. Kick your She'll ass. She'll fuck my ass up. Mm-hmm. And I promise you, dude, she would. <laughs> she would. <laughs> and uh, she said something about, something about this weather brings out the wildness in me. When she said that, it stuck with me. Some of this weather brings a wild to me. I'm like, damn, that drove, it drove me crazy. I didn't know what she meant by that. Oh, yeah, so you'd I have went, to dig for that. And I was, like, I was still on tour, you know, and then I called to get my oil changed another time. And I think I'd actually at this point, I'd ask her if she wanted to go out somewhere with me, do some karaoke. And she said, no, I can't. Whatever. And I went, and then a few months, another month went by. I think she, I called up there to get my oil change scheduled. Mm-hmm. Just, I would change it myself, but I got a lifetime warranty on my truck, by the way. Oh, yeah. They got me with that lifetime warranty. Okay. And um, she's like, hey, why don't you come get it at 5 o'clock because I get off at 6. I'm like, uh-oh. Got that ass. Again. There you I'm go. I'm fishing now. So I'm thinking, oh, hell. And, and I want you to know I showed up excited wore my nice outfit. She wasn't even there. Some other lady was there. I was like, hey, where's the hot one at? <laughs> where's the hot one over here at? So you know, she, like, like, ghosted she's you? Today. Yeah. And I was like. And then I looked at my message, and she's like, sorry. I was actually, they, they actually scheduled me off today. I'm like, damn. And it wasn't to, about a month later again, I was at, I was on a Friday. I was actually off for once. We took like a three-week break of the tour. Mm-hmm. I went to this little local pub, sh- slept in, did some, just see who was doing karaoke. I just like to get out and watch karaoke every now and then. Yeah. Have a beer or two, whatever. It's fun. And, uh, and everybody's like, I can't believe you're here. Are you, are you on? Everybody always, ain't you supposed to be on the road? I'm like, I have a life, too. You know, I'll just play. I like to watch other people play, too. Yeah. And so I was sitting there, and I was like, man, it was dead. I was like, damn, I'm about to go leave. So I got up to leave, and somebody stopped me and said, hey, Dustin, come here. And they gave me a hug. Somebody right at the door. And right as I was, she said, are you leaving this lady? Are you leaving? Yeah, I'm leaving. Right as I turned around and walked, there she come in with her friend. Oh, She hell. said, Dustin. And I, she goes, you leaving? I thought, hell no, we're staying. I was just talking to her yeah, for a minute. Her. <laughs> she was awesome. That's when it, and ever since then, I don't think I've spent a day away from her. One, weren't I? Seriously, I, my, well, I've spent some weekends, but yeah, ever since that moment, man, almost four months ago, actually, we we ain't been together long. Wow, known her for a while, but yeah, like dating, dating, yeah, yeah, right. At, I think it's like three, almost four months now. Yeah, yeah, but you put in the legwork. I did put in the legwork. You bought the proper test line. Yep. The right lure. Did, yeah. Now she's hooked, <laughs> and she and I and I and she's cool. She she she's goofy or I am. That's why I think it, that's the only reason I think it works. She's good. Yeah, as hell, dude. she's funny. But yeah, we uh, so we do karaoke, you know. And maybe in this movie night when I'm home, I don't want to. I I, I don't want to go out nowhere. 
When I get home, I'm tired. I don't want to go out to Well, I mean, you've been out on the damn road. Yeah, I don't like going out to eat. I'd rather eat at home now. I've learned mm-hmm. the older I have get, I don't know if it's the older I have get or the more I've traveled, but I hate going out to crowds. Crowds fuck me up. I'm not on stage. Yeah. If I'm in the middle of them, I'm, I'm no, I don't talk. I lock up. It's like anxiety. Dude, we. But I could be on stage for 3,000 people. Don't bother me. It's weird. Well, see, I'm, I've got a bad habit yeah. of when I tell people I'm going to come see your show, that I'll yeah. actually go see your show. Mm-hmm. Man of my word. So, what was his name? Jacob. Jacob Martin. Jacob That's Martin. right. Yeah, y'all keep talking. I'll have to look him up, too. And uh, he was playing down here at uh, Kid Rock. Oh, yeah. On the roof. I think I've been up there, yeah. And. I was like, he's playing. We're done for the day. Let's go down here. You know, I want to check him out. So we go down there. And I'm just like, dude, don't touch me. Don't, yeah. don't. I just, ugh. I get weird. It was just weird. And then you walk three. It's not actually three flights. It's six flights because they go back and forth, you know, all the way up. And we get up there, and I'm sweating. Yeah, I'm sweat. I get sweating in Walmart too. I go in Walmart, I get my ass in and out. Mm-hmm. Walgreens in and out. I don't know what it is, and I, I mean, I hate to say it in my home. I, I do get recognized sometimes, and it bothers me. It weirds me out. Yeah, embarrasses me. Nobody I don't know recognizes. What the fuck they've seen me do. I'm doing a lot of dumb shit. I'm like, I'm cool being recognized, but like, that's a guy singing that titty song. <laughs> I had one guy started doing that. I had one embarrassed the shit at me one time. One girl stopped me. One girl stopped me and goes, it's the titty man. I'm like, ah, shut the fuck up. Like, we're in public. There's kids. I don't want to be the titty man. I know. I want to be the normal. I want to be a normal guy. I want to just sing songs. And like, I like your music. But, dude, something about me, I'm dumb. I do some. I mean, I guess that's good. Yeah. I get. I mean, for a guy that never had number one but gets recognized a lot of places as a titty man. Well, yeah. It's worse than that. It could be there's a pecker man. Like, you know, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> or dick man. Like, oh, yeah. Whip it out. Whip it out. Whip it out. <laughs> I'm just normal, man. I think I come off as very uh, easy to talk to. You, yeah. That's why people, I think, I've had them sit there. In my, I've had a lot of people just sit in my booth and hang out with me. Don't buy nothing. I don't care. Yeah. I tell them, hey, y'all come hang out. Let's hang out. Just so I get to know them more and they can get to know my story. And then maybe the next time they may want to pick up something or when I drop a song, they'll be the. Usually those people are the first ones to share when you've talked to them. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I think it's a lot of guys, a lot of artists want to hang out backstage, man. You got to hang out with them. I'd rather be out <laughs> with the fans, man. Yeah, it's fun. I, I've made the mistake uh, in Michigan to try to walk. Cause sometimes I'll, I'll walk away from my booth and I'll walk in the middle yeah. of the show because I want to hear the legs. I love the legs. Yeah. They're awesome. I fangirl out, man. They're, they're the shit, dude. Like, oh, I ain't going to lie. I've, I've, seen, I've seen a bunch of shows, man, but dude, it's it's so good because they usually have a lot of subs, I man. Just yeah. kicking, and I fucked up, and they saw who I was, and I, I got mashed up. People trying to get pictures, 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 mm-hmm. and like, oh shit, I couldn't get out of the pit. Yeah, and um, and that, and the problem that is is the jealous boyfriends when yeah. a girl wants to get a picture. That's that's a problem. Yeah, and I, I'm just still young with learning it. Stay back with somebody. They want me to stay with somebody, not really security, but keep my. They want somebody to be able to know where I'm at. Right. You know what I mean? Because of that situation. Oh, well, you got to have it. Jealous boyfriends. And I ain't trying to steal your girlfriend, bro. I got a girl tells. But a lot of them want pictures, and it's awkward. I hate it. I, I always try to get the boyfriend to take a picture with us all. I don't like when they're like, hey, take my picture. Unless I'm like, he's going to get one next. Yeah. I'm weird about that. Did they're you see uh, uh, it was on the internet because you was talking about pictures and boyfriends? Jason Momoa. Uh-huh. The long-haired dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game of Thrones, all that yeah, stuff, you oh, know. Yeah. Women just ah, go like, ape shit like that over. Matt Rife guy, real hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he was doing fan pictures with people and stuff. Mm-hmm. But the way he was doing them, I heard yeah. they are taking and like the girls are hugging up on him, <laughs> and he's like stiff arming the guy. Oh, and I yeah. mean, they're really creating this whole thing. And it's just, I don't know, it's a thing. You know, it's just something that yeah. the fans are I, wanting. Yeah. But, yeah, I can totally see what you're talking about. because It's uncomfortable. And, and if you get a picture, it, it's, it is not safe to be in a pit. No. They don't see you on stage. They're like freaked out. Cause they don't, a lot of people won't recognize me if I'm not up there. I can I usually get away with it sometimes. Keep a hat yeah. down. When they're during the venue, I'm walking yeah. out there. And then sometimes I freak, oh, shit, you're the guy, your son. I was in the bathroom one time peeing next to him, and he freaked out. He says, holy shit, I'm peeing next to the opener. <laughs> I, 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 I forget, I forget I ain't supposed to do that. I, yeah. I just still, I'm still the same old asshole driving a forklift. Yeah. Same old dude, so I forget that there's a backstage bathroom. But when you got to pee, you got to pee. So I just run around the public one and forget. I just forget. 
I forgot because when I did the uh, the Freedom Jam when I was MC up there, I totally oh, yeah. f- I totally forgot about. We had a green room with a bathroom and or food. Usually, they have a shower. Some of these venues are nice. Like yeah, I get a shower. I, I love. I have to have like three showers a day. So yeah. tour sucks for me sometimes because I want a shower when I want one. Right. I want to have a convenience never convenient. Well, just take some extra water with you. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> There's a naked man behind the bus. <laughs> Singing titties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's fun. It's it's all a, it's a good time. The tour is fun. So I haven't been on one. Oh, it's fun. It's every bit what they say. It's hard though. It ain't. It's not as luxurious as you know as you think it would be. It, well, it's it's grueling. When well, when I was when I was doing lights and sound and stuff, you know, I just, I got custody of my kids when they were young. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I couldn't really go out on tour and do things. I was busy taking care of my children. Oh, that's good, though. That's, a, lot, a lot of people can't do that. No. That's good. That's true. All right. Dude, we done sat here and talked for almost yeah. two hours and a half. Heck yeah. What's going to be a fun? This will be on YouTube. Like, I have to share it. Yeah. I'm it's a, on YouTube. I'm going to load I'll it share up. it to my label, too. I'll share it. They, they'll like this. I'll, uh, once I load it up and everything and get the little code yeah. and stuff, I'll text it to you. Absolutely. I'll be, try to give you, I'm going to show y'all some love, too, or everybody. Try to get y'all some love. Oh, yeah. If I know any artists, I'll pit them y'all's way, too. Well, yeah. Just uh, give me a warning because, you know, I do tend to fangirl a little bit, but I don't show it. Right. Because when Wade was here, I found myself stumbling on some words, you know. <laughs> yeah, Wade's cool, too, um, man. Yeah. Like him. Crazy. Crazy. Crazy hey, got a taste on. He actually made me <laughs> more comfortable. He actually yeah. did. Nice. You, you know. Mean, you mean Tammy? I've never made his manager. Tammy. Yeah. I ain't never made She seems like she's a really cool lady, man. Oh, yeah. She's uh we were sitting there yeah. picking on each other and stuff. And she was, you know, and because of the, the CMA Fest and everything, you know, everybody's got that itinerary, you know. Yeah, I didn't make that. I was, uh, I ain't never been that level yet. I've never, pl- I played it one year. I played it. I met Dennis Quaid. He gave me a $100 tip. <laughs> <laughs> He's a really nice dude. But thank you, Dennis. He's a badass dude. Hit the sharks. Yeah. He was there in a crowd in California, and he's like, here's $100. I was like, well, I'm going to give you some more CDs. He goes, I don't need one of these CDs, man. This is for you. I like Georgia music. <laughs> there you go. It's kind of cool, man. It's, yeah. That's good neat, shit. Man. I love that. Yeah. All right, dude. We're going to get out of here. Man. Yeah. Look in that camera right there. Tell everybody your socials. Dustin Spears on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. 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 Or the toe. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> cool. All right, brother. We're going to get out of here. Man, it's been yeah, real. Absolutely. I appreciate you coming out, and we're going to get all this going. All right, y'all, we're out of here. And remember, like, share, subscribe, follow. If they got merch on their merch page, buy some merch, man. It helps these guys out to get out to you. Gives them gas money, actually. You know, just like Dustin said, sometimes you got to sell a T-shirt or two just to make gas money to get it to the next town. Um Everything's more expensive nowadays, so we all got to work together. We all got to help each other out, help aspiring songwriters, singers, your artists, help everybody. Every now and then, throw me a freaking bone, too. I mean, I'd appreciate it. Helps me get out there and, and hang out with these guys and get more guests that y'all want to see on the show. All right, we're going to get out of here. Appreciate y'all, and we'll see you. Bye.